bless you. I'll bless you. Oh, I'll bless you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 Father. Hallelujah, Lord God. We bless you on this Shabbat in the midst of mourning, in the midst of brokenness, Lord God, after watching, experiencing tragedies, Lord God, with, with, with our hearts in our hands before you, Lord God, as we lift our nation up before you, we bless you, Lord God, as we watch the consequences of our own sins unfold upon innocent people all over the nation from coast to coast. Father, we bless you. We praise you because you are high and lifted up. You are seated on the throne. We exalt you because only you can, can bring a message out of this mess. Only you, Lord God, can bring testimonies out of these tests, Lord God. Only you can create victors out of victims, Lord God. We praise you that you are working, Lord God. That you are moving, Lord God. And we invite you to have your way in us on today. We invite you to minister to our hearts. We invite you to heal and deliver. We invite you to uncover foundations of sin. We invite you, Lord God, to excavate things buried deep in our nation, Lord God, and, and, and draw us as a people to, to, to stand at attention before our commander in chief and move forward as soldiers, as generals in your army, Lord God. We invite you to have your way. We invite you to move by the power of your spirit on today. Give us hearts that turn towards you and give us a yes as you have some things that you require of us today, some things you need from us on today. We praise you, Lord God. We bless you. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And I welcome you to our Shabbat temple service. I'm Apostle Marquita Brooks, the founder and ministry leader of the truth and the spirit. And we come to before the Lord today with heavy hearts, just having experienced tragedy after tragedy after tragedy um, for just the last two weeks. We're just, we're just going to look at the last two weeks in the United States um, and blessing God for his tremendous grace upon us and his, his hand upon us as a nation in the name of Yeshua. Hallelujah. And so our, our temple services are on Shabbat, which is Friday sundown to Saturday sundown, this day that the Lord established and set apart, declared holy in Genesis chapter two. We come before him on this day that he has set apart for us to assemble, for us to rest from our labors, for us to present our burdens to him, for us to receive healing, wholeness, and deliverance from him. We come before him on Shabbat. And I'd like to introduce this ministry to you. We are the Truth in the Spirit, a Messianic Apostolic Assembly of Believers in Messiah Shul who have come from all walks of life and ethnicities and, and religious experiences to prepare for our Messiah's return. We believe in the truth of the whole Bible. We minister through all fivefold ministry gifts of the Apostle, Prophet, Evangelist, Pastor, and Teacher. Our members, partners, and supporters join us remotely from all over the world, which means there is a place for you in the truth, in the spirit. We have, uh, we are preparing for Shavuot, which is the harvest festival, also known as Pentecost. Shavuot means weeks in Hebrew. It is seven weeks after first fruits, which is also known as resurrection day. It's the day our Messiah was resurrected. Shavuot is also called Pentecost, Pente meaning 50 um, cost being days, 50 days from, again, resurrection. 
uh, Resurrection Day, which is first fruits, biblically speaking. We will have our Shavuot service on Shavuot, which is next Sunday, June 8th, or June 5th, excuse me, June 5th, eight days from now, at 11 a.m. Eastern time. It will be online just as we are right now um, on Zoom. You can actually join us in the Zoom room by registering at truthservices.org. Again, that's truthservices.org. You'll get the Zoom link to join us for Shovel Oats. Um, during that service, we will offer the spiritual sacrifices that God requires for Shovel Oats, which is a harvest festival. It's all about making his people, Jews and Gentiles, one in Messiah, which is why we lift up two loaves of bread tied with a red cord, we offer them before the Lord that he can make us one in him and we can go forward into the harvest fields. And there are other uh, sacrifices that he requires. We actually have 14 communions on Shavuot in accordance with the scripture so that we can pray for ourselves, we can intercede and we can be prepared to go into the harvest fields. Today, as we're preparing for Shavuot and actually mourning the loss of life um, in various locations across the United States, we will have nine communions. You do not necessarily have to partake of the communion elements with us. You can just pray in agreement with us. But if you do have a matzah or unleavened bread in your home, or you have 100% grape juice or wine in your home, you can participate in these communions with us. So I want to encourage you, if you would like to do so today, you can go ahead and get your elements, your grape juice and your matzah or your wine and your unleavened bread so that you can be prepared to join us as we go before the Lord during our service today. And then no, please also be prepared for the Shavuot service on Sunday, June 5th. Register at truthservices.org. Bring your matzah and grape juice then as well. We train God's people all over the world through our Priesthood Academy International to understand how to offer these spiritual sacrifices in ways that are acceptable unto the Lord. Our Messiah fulfilled every sacrifice that is in the scripture. When we pray and we take communion as the Lord has directed us, we are rightly applying the sacrifice of our Messiah because he is every single offering. As priests, that is our responsibility. And you've got to understand it as we bring both the old covenant and the new covenant together for the full revelation of God's will for his people and to prepare for our Messiah's return. You can learn more about our Priest Academy International at truthinspirit.org. There's actually a, a button across the homepage. I think it's at the top of every page that says Priesthood Academy. When you click it, you'll receive more information and you can actually complete that. You can complete that form on that page. And let us know that you'd actually like more information about the Priesthood Academy, and I will send that to you soon. Now, these are our instructions for today. You can send your prayer requests, questions, and prophetic revelations, and even inquiries about connecting with this ministry via email to info at truthandspirit.org. So if you're watching on YouTube or if you're watching on Facebook, you can send those emails to us at info at truthandspirit.org. We also suggest you download our free burnt offerings workbook for deliverance and observance of biblical feast days to include Rosh Hashanah at burntoffering.org. You know, as we're going to be praying today and, and offering offerings, uh, there's actually a video in that free workbook that explains what we're doing, why we're doing what we're doing. Um, and so we, we, we always suggest that people download it, watch the video and go through the workbook to understand the spiritual sacrifices that the Lord requires and why we do what we do in this ministry. For more information about us as a ministry, you can go to truthandspirit.org. Um, please note also that we do not have a formal offertory period. So you may give your first fruits, tithes, offerings, shalemim offering for Shavuot, and monthly partnerships at any time during this service or throughout the week via PayPal at truthandspirit.org slash giving. Or you can actually use our Cash App ID, dollar sign truth and spirit, to give via Cash App. Please state the type of giving in the memo or the four line. I want to encourage you to be faithful in your giving. Truth in the Spirit has always been a 100% tithing ministry and that everybody in the ministry tithes. Um, and, and that is important because of where God is taking us and what he wants to do in us. We really have to be in alignment with him, in agreement with him, and obedient to his commandments and his scriptures. So if you're a member of the Truth in the Spirit, remember to be true to your wealth dedication covenant <clears throat> and faithfully give your tithe, which is 10% of your gross income, and offerings as the Lord requires. For partners of TIS, which means you can belong to other ministries, you might be leading your own ministry, but you come into covenant partnership with us. I wanna encourage you to be faithful to sow every month into the truth and the spirit. And this is so important because as you sow into us, you know, we are sowing into you. 
And I want to encourage you to, to allow us to keep ministering to you by sowing into us and blessing us as we go forward in everything that God has called us to. We can't do what God has called us to do without your support, your prayers and your financial support. So seek God about actually being involved in both ways by praying for us daily and then also um, by sowing into this ministry regularly because the commitment that partners make is to sow into this ministry every month. The Lord and you know what amount that is. It's not about the amount. It's about being faithful to our agreement, our covenant with each other. Now, if you are viewing our broadcast or videos on YouTube or Facebook, I want to encourage you to seek God about sowing into truth in the spirit because he is expanding our ministry. He's doing a lot in us and we can't do it without your support. So, of course, again, you can give via PayPal at truthandspirit.org slash giving or use our cash app ID, which is dollar sign truth and spirit. Now, please be reminded that Shavuot is a festival on which the Lord requires a Shalemim offering, which you'll see in Deuteronomy chapter 16, verses 16 through 17. It is an offering that you determine how much to give the Lord based on how much he's blessed you. And when you give that offering to the Lord, that Shalimim offering, he releases a blessing upon you for your entire household. And so I want to encourage you to be setting aside your Shalimim offering for Shavuot next Sunday so that then you can give it sometime during that service or even from sundown June 4th to sundown June 5th, anytime Saturday night or Sunday day, that'll be Shavuot. You can give your Shalemim offering. And of course you can do it at truthandspirit.org slash giving or um, use our cash app dollar sign truth and spirit. Now, as you will recall, our service is a Shabbat temple service. And the reason it's a temple service is because the temple is our model for worship as a united body Messiah globally. The, the synagogue um, was the model for regional and geographic ministries, people coming together within an area. But the temple was for the whole body of Messiah. And the truth in the spirit has been established for the whole body of Messiah, whether you're members, whether you're partners, whether you're supporters, no matter what God has called you to do in the kingdom, the truth in the spirit and everything we do is here for you. And so our services are temple services because we want to uh, worship as we see that model in heaven. The temple was modeled after worship in heaven. And this is how we are trained to approach a holy God, because that's what we will do for eternity. That's what the angels and 24 elders are doing right now. And so we start, of course, at the bottom of the screen, which is going to be actually that, that eastern gate coming into the, the temple court area. Um, but the words start at the bottom, and so does the diagram. And so you start in the outer court. And in the outer court, we are prepared for worship. We spend quite a bit of time in preparation because we want to make sure we are prepared to, to enter into the presence of our holy God. Then we're brought into the inner court. And in the inner court, we enter into and renew our covenant with the Lord because he is the great king and he does not allow people into his presence who are not personally known to him. Then we go into confession and repentance as well at, uh, at the altar of burnt offerings. Of course, we are staying in our own positions physically where we are, but in that inner court was the altar of burnt offerings where deliverance, healing, and reconciliation back to God happened. That's why we confess and repent in our inner court experience. Then we go into the outer court, I mean, outer sanctuary. So we're going deeper in, we went to the outer sanctuary the holy place where we get to just adore God for who he is and thank him for what he's done. We just worship the Lord and the splendor of his holiness. And then he draws us into the inner sanctuary, the most holy place, which is his throne room. And there we receive prophetic revelation, instructions, healing, deliverance, uh, uh, strategy, wisdom, encouragement, everything that we need to move forward. And this model has been established, not just for our corporate worship, but even in your private times of worship. And as you travel through this journey with us every Shabbat. Prayerfully, you are learning how to approach a holy God for yourself so that even when you're at home, you know how to really get into the presence of God. Now, this is our temple service order following the nine steps for transformation. We start with preparation, which is not one of the nine steps for transformation. Of course, it's, it's just essential for us to go into the nine steps for transformation. And that happens in our outer court experience where we praise God, which we've done. We sound the shofar, we offer the prayer, we received the introduction to the truth in the spirit and instructions for today. We went over the temple, our example for worship, and now you're going over the Shabbat temple service order, our order for service today. The very next thing will be my exhortation or message for today. After that, we go into our inner court experience with the prayer of salvation, the enter into covenant with the Lord, and the covenant re renewal for those of us who are already in covenant with the Lord. Then we move into that first step for transformation, which is invitation. And we do that with our liturgy. 
the liturgy is where we sing worship songs repetitively. Every week we sing the same three worship songs so that we all will learn them and we can worship God from our own lips. Then we go into reconciliation, where we review the points of repentance and reflection and we worship God. Then we experience the next four steps of transformation together. Restoration, worship, where God actually releases a worship into us. We witness his glory and his word comes forth, meaning his prophetic word. And so as we're worshiping and praying, God begins to restore us, release a, a deeper worship to us. We, he, we see his presence, we witness his glory and his prophetic words come forward as prophecy takes us right into the outer sanctuary. Then we go into teaching where the prophecy has to be explained. We have to understand what has come forth prophetically while we're continuing to worship the apostolic teaching goes forth. Then we experience transformation in the inner sanctuary where the Lord releases proclamations from the throne room and we offer prayer to him and sometimes communion and prophetic acts. Today we will have communion, but our communion actually today because of the purpose of our communion. It is going to happen earlier in our service because this is this is it's it's repentant uh, uh, communion. It'll actually happen earlier in our service. Then we of course transition to our next phase of glory, which is the wealth dedication covenant. We review that again, um, and we receive our benediction and the ironic blessing. Hallelujah! And so now we're actually about to go into today's message. It actually is it's it, the the message itself is heartbreaking but it's a heartbreaking message because we're in a, a place where our hearts are broken I, I don't know um where your heart is but i know my heart is broken and i know god's heart is broken you know he continues to watch these atrocities as well and our the message for today is it serves a dual purpose it is in fact preparing us for shovel oat because there is a harvest field that the lord is sending us into but it is also addressing the recent shootings that have occurred in the United States. And so we're going to actually go right into this message, which is, again, a part of our preparation for going into the presence of the Lord. So the title of today's message is A Heavy Heart in a Harvest Field of Blood. Now, we start in Acts chapter one. And we understand that in Acts chapter one, the apostles were preparing for Shavuot. So if you're reading the complete Jewish, and in Acts chapter 2, verse 1, it says the festival of Shavuot arrived. If you're reading in the NIV or the King James, the New King James, it says, that it says the day of Pentecost had come. Remember I told y'all that's the same feast day. It's just Pentecost is Greek, meaning 50 days. Shavuot is uh, uh, Hebrew, meaning weeks. Seven weeks, 50 days, same thing. The apostles were preparing for Shavuot, but they had to address a recent tragedy. And it was the betrayal that they'd experienced from Judas. And so you're going to see in Acts chapter one, which is where we are, in verses one through 17, they have experienced the presence of the Lord, our Messiah. He actually walked with them for 40 days. They, they watched him. Uh, ascend on high the angels assured assured them that he is coming back the same way that he went up before he ascended he lets them know that they must stay in jerusalem to receive the gift that has been promised which is the holy spirit so they gather together in that upper room in jerusalem and they are are, are praying and they're seeking god and getting in position for shabuot but they have to address a tragedy and they have to address the, the, the torture and the, the innocent death, the murder of their Messiah because of Judas's betrayal. Innocent blood had been spilled and he sacrificed himself. Our Messiah chose to sacrifice himself, but nonetheless, innocent blood had been spilled and it was because of the betrayal of one of their own. And as they are positioning themselves for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, they have to deal with this tragedy. And please know their hearts were broken as well. He ate with them, slept with them, drank with them for three years, looked them in the face, smiled with them, prayed with them, cast out demons with them. He was there when their feet were washed. He was a part of their number. And for him to betray Messiah and all of them in that way broke their hearts. 
for them to witness. John and the women witnessed this beautiful, this brutal uh, 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 torture of Messiah and this, this, this public disgrace and mockery of Messiah hanging him on the cross. It was a tragedy. Now, the beautiful thing is we know how the story continues. Our Messiah rose three days later on first fruits. And then he spent 40 days with them. So they've got these 10 days to now deal with what has occurred and to position themselves for Shavuot. Now, the reason I give you guys that backdrop is because I don't want you to feel like us looking at the shootings um, in Buffalo, then in Laguna Woods, California, then in Uvalde, Texas, that it's a separate thing from us preparing for Shavuot. They had to address Judas's betrayal as a part of their preparation for Shavuot. And this is why the Lord is being so diligent with us right now. We have to address the recent shootings as preparation for Shavuot. We cannot pretend that these things haven't happened and we can't sing gleefully and just sing louder as if people did not just lose their lives senselessly, some of whom were in church when it happened. We can't pretend that didn't happen. We can't pretend that this is not the harvest field we're going into. We're going into a harvest field of blood with heavy hearts. Many of us still mourning. And if you're not mourning, you will be before this service is over, because that is actually where God's heart is. His heart is broken as well. And he commands us to mourn with those who mourn. So we absolutely have to address this to get us in position for Shavuot. So now I want to give you guys this scripture. You'll see it's right there at the top of the page. Acts chapter one, verses 18 and 19. And this is in the complete Jewish Bible. And you're going to see that it's a parenthetical insert. You know, when, when Luke put it here in Acts chapter one, it was, it was a parenthetical insert. Like he puts it there intentionally, but he's letting us know why they had to address this betrayal of Judas. He, he gives us this, this little insight as to what has occurred. And this is what we see in Acts chapter one, verses 18 through 19. It's there before you. Now, Yehuda was the name of the betrayer in Hebrew. Judas is going to be a, a, a Roman transliteration. You know, Roman names always end with the with like the, 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 the ES or the AS at the end. So Judas is Roman, but he was a Jew. His name was Yehuda, which means Judah. That was his name. And so you'll see that there. I'm um, speaking of Judas. And this is how it reads. With the money Yehuda received for his evil deed, he bought a field. And there he fell to his death. His body swelled up and burst open and all his insides spilled out. This became known to everyone in Yerushalayim, which is Jerusalem. So they called that field Hakal Dama, which in their language means field of blood. Judas' blood was spilled. He, of course, was the betrayer, but he had betrayed innocent blood which it says in, in Matthew, we'll look at that scripture in the future as well. In the same way, innocent blood has been spilled. There's been betrayal. Innocent blood has been spilled. And we've got to look at that. In Buffalo, New York, on Saturday, May 14, an American citizen, 18 years old, Joe, 40 minutes into another community, but the same state, so all these people are New Yorkers, to a Topps grocery store and begin shooting people in the parking lot and even inside the store. Now, according to scripture, those people would have been considered his neighbor because that's what the Lord said. He, he said, you know, Lord, who, who is our neighbor? And the Lord started to share with the disciples when he when he talked to us about doing unto you know others as we should we would like done to us and and that we've got to be good to our neighbors. Who is our neighbor? He he let them know that Samaritans were their neighbors, living in the same nation but in a different region, a different cultural group. But he said they were their neighbors, and he gives the example of the good Samaritan. And so we understand the Peyton Gendron betrayed his neighbors in Buffalo, New York. They were, in fact, his neighbors. The very next day, 
in Laguna Woods, California, which is in Orange County, at, at a Taiwanese Presbyterian church, a, a gentleman shows up, a 68-year-old gentleman shows up and joins them for lunch, has lunch with them, locks the doors, and begins shooting. And it's only because of one heroic act that there's only one person who died, but five were injured. And it's because they all overtook him, risking their lives. Again, he betrayed his neighbors. They were, in fact, his neighbors. And Uvalde, a young man, Salvador Ramos, another 18-year-old who attended Uvalde High School, went to Robb Elementary School after shooting his grandmother in the face and killed everyone he could in a classroom, in an elementary school, children and teachers. And the only students that survived were students who put the blood of their classmates on themselves so that they would look dead to him. He betrayed his neighbors. Now, this is something we have to look at because the harvest field that we're being sent into on Shavuot has become a field of blood. And this is not new. It has been a field of blood. I'm not going to revisit everything I shared during the God Speaks this past week, but for two weeks, I've been talking about homegrown terror. And homegrown means it's grown out of the roots of this nation. Terror against First Nations, terror against African-Americans, terror against immigrants, terror against people who don't look like other people. Those seeds of terror in this nation have been sprouting up, and this is not new. This is not new. It's not. It's been happening. And so we've got to recognize the harvest field we're going into. And we have to have the heavy heart that the Lord has so we can actually address this harvest field rightly. Those are the, 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 the topics of the God Speaks that I shared on 518, which is after the Buffalo shooting and after the, the Laguna Woods shooting, which I didn't mention on, on 518, but that one happened actually the day right after Buffalo. And then of course, the one on 525, which is right after the day after the Uvalde shooting. Um, if you have not watched those, I would encourage you to do so that you really understand the foundation of this nation because we are going to address that terror. We're going to address it today. Now, these are our three points. Point number one, the workers must be in order for the harvest. That's what they were doing in Acts 1. They were setting order. They had to address the betrayal of Judas and the, the, the tragedy that resulted. Because it, it was traumatic for them. It was traumatic for them to watch their Lord die. It really was traumatic. And it was traumatic for to be one of their brethren to be responsible for it. But they had to set order even in the midst of that tragedy. Point number two, innocent blood must be mourned. Do we want to mourn? Are we tired of mourning? But it still must be mourned. Point number three, others headed toward death need rescue. This is not the first time. It will not be the last. We got to get on our post as watchmen. Now let us look at point number one. The workers must be in order for the harvest. Now, how do we get in order? Well, the first thing we've got to do is be obedient to instructions. The Lord gives us collective instructions, which are mostly in the Bible. And he gives us individual instructions through the Holy Spirit. He needs us to take them all seriously. And he needs us to be obedient to all of the instructions. And you're going to see the scripture in front of you. This comes out of Acts chapter 1, verses 4 through 5. The, this was the instruction they received. On one occasion, while he, that is Yeshua, was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. But John baptized with water, but in a few days, you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So what was the instruction? Don't leave Jerusalem. Now, I know for you guys, it's like that, that's all he told them to do. It was a big deal. They were wanted by the Jewish religious leaders. They were wanted by the Roman government. They had already left their family and friends and all of them were scattering. He had to bring them back to Jerusalem. They were leaving. They were scattering. They weren't even from Jerusalem. 
They were from Galilee. They were going home where it was safe. He says, stay in Jerusalem. So he's saying, stay in the hot spot. Stay in the uncomfortable place. Stay where the assignment is, even though that's not where you want to be. Stay right there because that's where I'm pouring out. What instructions has God been giving to you? And we take them so lightly. If he says fast, if he says pray, if he says worship, we say, oh, that's not going to change anybody's life. I guarantee you that it will. He told them one thing, stay in Jerusalem. It changed the world. It changed the world. One instruction. They were obedient to it. For us to be in order, we've got to be obedient to his instructions. Sub point B, to be in order, the workers must be in prayer. This is verse 14 of Acts chapter one. This is out of the complete Jewish. It says, these all devoted themselves single-mindedly to prayer, along with some women, including Miriam, that, that's Mary, of course, in the transliterations, Yeshua's mother, and his brothers. We've got to be in prayer. Are many of us weary of praying? Yes. Do, do we want to cry anymore? No. Have we been on our faces for years? Yes. But now is when it matters the most. It, it doesn't say they were in prayer. It says they were single-mindedly gathered together, devoted, devoted in prayer. Are we devoted to pray? When we come together, are we single-minded? Are we praying our will? See, the only way to be single-minded in prayer is to, to, to resign that you are only going to pray the will of the Lord. Then everybody's praying the same stuff. If all you're going to pray is God's will, everybody's going to pray in agreement. It's when we pray our own will, which is like an unto witchcraft, that we are divided in our prayer. we got to be devoted to single-minded prayer, meaning, Lord, you show us what you want us to pray, we're going to pray that as individuals in our homes and when we come together. And lastly, on the, sub, on the, the first point, for the workers to be in order, they have to be in position. Now this is going to be Acts chapter one still, verses 15 through 17, but also verses 21 through 26. And it's right in your, in, in, in your, um, your view. It's right here in front of you. And this is how it reads. During this period, when the group of believers numbered about 120, Kepha, that is Peter, stood up and addressed his fellow believers. Brothers, the Ruach HaKodesh, that is the Holy Spirit, spoke in advance through David about Yehuda. He's speaking about Judas. And these words of the Tanakh, that is the Old Testament, had to be fulfilled. He was guide for those who arrested Yeshua. He was one of us and had been assigned a part in our work. And then Peter actually quotes the scriptures. He quotes these, these Psalms that come from David, Psalm 69, 26, and Psalm 109, 8. Then going on to verses 21 and 26, Peter continues. Therefore, one of the men who have been with us continuously throughout the time the Lord Yeshua traveled around among us from the time of Yohanan, which is John, was immersing people until the... the from the time Yohanan was immersing people until the day Yeshua was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. These are the words of Peter. So Peter is saying, all right, we need everybody in their position. Judas is not in his position. He's gone to go where he's supposed to be. But somebody has to be in that place. I want you to just, just, just pause for a minute. How many posts in the body are vacant? Because people have jumped ship, lost faith, fallen because of sin. How many posts do we need to be filling right now? How many positions are empty in the body? We got to be in order. And, and this is why those of us who have said, yes, work so hard, because the truth of the matter is we're actually on multiple posts at the same time. We're doing multiple jobs. And it's because others are not on their posts. But we understand that the posts have to be filled. Where are you? Do you know your position? And if you know it, are you in it? Or are you saying, the Lord will raise up somebody else? We can't afford to take that attitude. We can't afford to take that attitude. We've got to be on our posts. Let's go to point number two. 
Innocent blood must be mourned. It has to be mourned. Now, this is the scripture in Matthew that I was referring to. It comes out of Matthew chapter 27, verses three through eight. And this is in the complete Jewish. And this is how it reads. When Yehuda, that is Judas, who had betrayed him, saw that Yeshua had been condemned, he was seized with remorse and returned the 30 silver coins to the head Kohanim, that is the priest and elder, saying, I sinned and betraying an innocent man to death. Even Judas knows it was sin. Innocent blood has been, been shed. That's sin. What is that to us? They answered. Now they're the priest. They're the priest. But they said to him, what is that to us that innocent blood has been shed? Why should we care is what the priests are saying. Now, I just, I just shared with you guys that there are posts that are unfulfilled. There's people that are not in their post. These guys sat in the seat of Moses, which is what Yeshua said about them. But he said they do not do what Moses did. They don't fulfill the will of the father. So some posts are left unfilled because there are people in the post, but they're not doing the job and their heart is wrong. That was the case with these priests and elders because he said he had sinned by betraying an innocent man to death. In other versions, it actually says innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? Meaning, why should we care? Now let's continue reading. They, they then said to him, that's your problem. And the priest can never afford to say that. Y'all understand that the priestly responsibility is to minister to man on behalf of God and minister to God on behalf of men. Their job was to minister to him. The job was to minister to Yeshua. They did neither. Now, let's keep reading. Hurling the pieces of silver into the sanctuary, he left. That is, Judas left. Then he went off and hanged himself. The head Kohanim, that is the priest, took the silver coins and said, it is prohibited to put this into the temple treasury because it is blood money. So they decided to use it to buy the potter's field as a cemetery for foreigners. This is how it came to be called the field of blood, a name it still bears. Now, I have to pause for just a second. And, and I, I, let me, let me just, just share this caveat with you guys. Today, I'm going to actually allow myself to feel every emotion that I'm supposed to feel. I'm not going to try to hold it together. I'm not going to try to present something to you guys that I think looks religious or professional because that's not what we're doing today. I have to feel what I'm feeling and you're going to have to give yourself permission to do the same thing because we cannot do the work that the Lord has called us to today if we, if we uh, have facades if we present fronts, if we uh, do what we think is presentable and acceptable rather than actually feeling what we're feeling. We can't go forward if that's what we do. So I can't do it. You're not gonna be able to do it. I'm giving you that warning now as we look at this scripture that absolutely breaks my heart. So I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna share my screen again so you can look at it while I'm talking about it. After he throws the silver coins into the temple, the priests themselves say, it is prohibited. Stop there. Prohibited where? In the Torah, in the scriptures. It's prohibited to put this money in the temple treasury because it's blood money. Now, let, let's back up. Who gave him that money? They did. They are saying it's blood money, but they gave it to him. So they're acknowledging that innocent blood has been betrayed. They're acknowledging it and not putting the money in the temple treasury. But there's no repentance. They're not repenting at all. And of course, they were incapable of helping him facilitate his repentance. Incapable. So they buy a field, a potter's field, and they make it into a cemetery for foreigners. Now, now, let me just pause for a second there. These are the same leaders who had created the, the outer court. Y'all know that, let me show you the picture. Let's, let's, let's look at the temple picture. 
for just a minute. Told y'all we, we, we got to experience some things today. This is the picture of the temple area. And it always has looked like this. Solomon's temple, Herod's temple, they all look like this. You see that outer court? Remember I told you the purpose of the outer court is, is to prepare for worship. That's the purpose of the outer court. These same leaders had transformed the outer court into the court of the Gentiles. Meaning if you were not a Jew and you wanted to worship the God of Israel, that was as far as you could go, it was right there in the outer court. But that also told the money changers, you can set up tables there in the outer court because the Gentiles are not going to have the shekel tax because they're not going to have shekels. They're going to have to change their money over. And they're not going to have doves and goats, you know, to offer as burnt offerings. So you can sell them to the Gentiles there in the outer court. So nobody's able to prepare for worship because they can't, they've been crowded out of the outer court. The Gentiles aren't even allowed to go into the inner court. And so they're just getting hustled in the outer court area. That's all that's happening. They're getting robbed. They're getting hustled. They don't get to worship and they don't get to learn about the Lord. It's a, it, it, like the outer court had, you, you sure called it a den of robbers. That's what the outer court had become. Now, these same leaders that said it's prohibited to put this money in the temple treasury because it's blood money. Same leaders. These are the leaders that we're talking about. We're talking about these same guys. They then take the blood money. That is only blood money because they actually paid Judas to betray Yeshua. So it is blood money because of them. It's because of them that is blood money. They decide to buy a field and they say, let's bury foreigners in that field. Why? Because the same foreigners that were not good enough to worship the God of Israel with them were not good enough to be buried alongside them. So they take sinful money, buy a field, and discriminate against the foreigners even in death. Even in death, you can't be close to us. Even in death, we're going to disdain you. And not only that, we're going to defile the land where we're going to bury you. And we're going to use money that's prohibited to be received by God to buy the land where we're going to bury you guys. That's what has happened here. That's not unrelated to what we're talking about. Because two of the shootings that we're looking at were hate crimes. Two of them. The Buffalo shooting on May 14th was specifically a hate crime because we understand that the gunman, Peyton Gendron, had a manifesto that spoke all about this replacement theory that, that, that minorities were replacing whites in America and then made videos about what he was going to do. Now, when it comes to the church in California, many people don't understand what actually happened in the Presbyterian church in California. But David Chow, a 68 year old man who is an American citizen, he's an American. Please remember all three gunmen are Americans. All three are American citizens. He was driven by anti-Taiwanese hate and upset about tensions between China and Taiwan. So he goes into a Taiwanese church and opens fire. Now, this is so key because a lot of people just really don't understand what has happened. People see, oh, an Asian man kill other Asian people. That, that There's not an understanding that there's groups, even among ethnic groups, that have issues with each other. That there's ethnic, nationalistic issues. So this is what they say about Chow, who was the shooter. He was a U.S. citizen who grew up in Taiwan, but his family was among those forced to flee mainland China for Taiwan after 1948 as nationalistic forces lost to the communists. He had ties to an organization that was opposed to Taiwan's independence from China. And, and, and this has caused some real pain and hurt among Asians and Asian Americans, because all of these tensions have come here, right here to America. So it, it was a political motivation behind what happened in these tensions. He didn't know these people, but when he came there, he said to them, I've been going to your church for a few weeks. Y'all just probably never seen me before. Nobody recognized him. Like, you know this guy, you know this guy? Nobody recognized him, but they believed him. He said he had been there before. They welcomed him in. 
He had lunch with them and then shot people up because of his pain, his family's pain from having to leave China and go to Taiwan and all the tensions now between China and Taiwan. Now, none of which did any of the Taiwanese Americans in the Presbyterian church have anything to do with. But that is why one of them lost their life and others were injured and would have died too and would have died too were it not for the acts of heroism that saved their lives, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. Now, it's important that we understand that because when we're looking back at what happened in Yeshua's betrayal, we see people who see themselves better than other people. The priests thought they were better than Yeshua and his disciples because none of them were learned people. They thought they were better than the foreigners, crowding them out in the outer court, buying a field with blood money for them and, and telling them they can't be even buried with them in death. Y'all remember the priest that, 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 that prayed about being better than the, the publican or the, the, the tax collector? Jews used to pray, God, thank you that I'm not a, a woman, a, a dog, or a Gentile. And Gentile was the lowest one on that list. Gentile was the lowest one. I mean, when, when you understand these mentalities, you realize that, that biblically speaking, God was showing us there's a model for what the enemy does. He didn't change. He just changed the people that he uses to do it by, but his tactics are exactly the same. When we look at this, we've got to not just look at what the priests did and look at what Judas did. Look at what, you know, Chow and, and, and Gendron and, and Ramos did. We've got to say, Lord, why is there an environment for that to even happen among us? You know, we could look at first century Israel and understand why there was an environment for that. Why is there an environment in America? That, that's the biggest question, because that's what we're looking at today. This is the, the Bible is our example. We're looking at what we're dealing with today. Why is there an environment of that today? Well, there's three things right there in front of you that we have to address. Betrayal. When you don't see somebody as your neighbor, when you don't see somebody as your brother, a fellow citizen, your sister, it's easy to dehumanize them. It's easy to betray the social contracts that we've all made with each other in the United States. We have social contracts with each other. It's easy to break those contracts because you don't see them like you see yourself. You don't see them as important. You don't see them as worthy or you see them as competition. For Judas, he saw Yeshua as just, just, just not being as intelligent as him. You, should, you want to remember, everybody was uneducated according to the, 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 the Jewish way of education in the first century. Even Yeshua, his, his father was a carpenter. But Judas had education. Judas and Matthew would have been the only two that came from a background that would have been considered educated at that time. So Judas has got some little knowledge, some learning on him. This is why he was the keeper of the purse, right? You know, he could do some stuff. He knew the educated people of his day, the priest, he knew them. And he felt like, well, you know, this man, Yeshua, he's amazing. He's got all this power. He didn't really understand who he was. Clearly, he didn't understand who he, who he was following. But he doesn't have it right. I'm going to fix this because I know better than him. And the priest saw Yeshua as an obstacle. He was in their way. They had the power. They had the wealth. They had the, the, the prowess. They had what they wanted. He was in their way. That's how Gendron saw African-Americans. That's how Chow saw Taiwanese Americans. They're in the way. And Ramos, it seems, saw everybody that way, even his own grandmother in the way. When, when you are so focused on self, betrayal is easy. When you see yourself as independent, not part of a community, betrayal is easy. And I actually talked about this on Wednesday. That is a fruit of Hellenism. That Greco-Roman mindset teaches us to value the individual over the community. It's a very Western way of thinking. Eastern thinking, which is going to be biblical thinking, values the community first. 
and the individual as a valuable part of the community, which is why in certain cultures, your first name is your family name. Your last name is your individual name. In Western culture, your first name is your individual name. Why? Because we see the individual is more important than the community. And in a, and in a society where we do that, where we tell individuals they are more important than the whole community, then other people become obstacles to what I'm trying to do. And, and what do you do with an obstacle? You get it out of the way. It creates a culture of betrayal. No loyalty because I'm out for self. And we, we actually teach that. We breed that into our children to be individualistic. We have them competing with each other in schools where we rank them with each other. We, we, we post grades and you know, we teach them to be like this. We start very early. We put them in little competitions. We, we teach individualism, which leads to narcissism, which makes it very easy to portray not only just an individual, but an entire community, an entire society. It's very easy to portray because I don't see myself as a part of them. I see me. It's about me, myself, and I, but that's not biblical. Now let's look at condemnation. Judas after realizing what had happened, because he didn't think it was going to play out the way it played out, because he's so smart. He's so smart. He figured out how it was going to play out. He was wrong. It did not play out like that. He was being played by the priest. He didn't know it because he's so smart. He didn't think that could happen. Now he feels condemned. In fact, he is. Yeshua's been condemned to death. Judas feels condemned because it's his fault. He's the one who does it. What does the priest do? The priest says, what is that to us? That is your problem. How many people in our society are dealing with guilt, shame, condemnation, and there is no one to help them carry that weight. There is no one to tell them that Yeshua died for that, that they don't have to feel that way. Because all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Even Peyton Gendron's soul is not beyond redemption, y'all, because he's still alive. The only of the three young men, he's still alive. And, and this is so important that we recognize that because we get into such a place where we list, just like we have a hierarchy of people, we have a hierarchy of sins. And if somebody has done something that we think is so bad, we condemn them and we leave our role as priests. We don't offer prayers. We don't offer the plan of salvation. We don't cross lines into other communities to make sure that they know God loves them. No, you got to be like me and do what I do. Otherwise, you're condemned. That's exactly what the priests were telling Judas. Because they were just as sinful as him. What is that to us? That's your problem. Why was it Judas's problem? Because he wasn't like them. Because they offer offerings at the temple every day. Because they pray and they know how to pray the Psalms in Hebrew every morning. Because they do that. Oh, oh, there's no blood on their hands. But you, you're a regular God. So that's your problem. God is no respecter of persons. And we have got to learn to help people deal with that condemnation that is on our whole community. Do you know how many people are suffering with secret shame? And it weighs on them. And you know what secret shame causes you to do? Commit more sins to cover it up. But Because we, we don't want people to come forth and confess. And I'm not talking about the world. I'm talking about the body. You better not come to church and confess. You better not show up at the synagogue and tell somebody what you did. You better not. You better not. Because you're about to be blacklisted. You're about to be blackballed. You're about to be talked about. You're going to be kicked out of the ministry. You're going to be set down. Whatever can happen to you is going to happen. You had better not address your sin. So what do you got to do to cover it up? You got to go to the devil because you can't go to God's people. You can't go to the priest when you've done something wrong, when you're stuck in an addiction, when you got a secret sin. You can't talk to nobody about it. So what do you do? You go to the devil. The devil says, I got you. I'm going to fix that. I'm going to fix that for you. And how does he fix it? By putting you in a trap of sin. Sealing your soul in condemnation. The priests are out of position. See, that was point number one. We had to get in order. So that's why we had to do that point first. We got to get in order because this is the field. This is the field we're going into. We're not just going into the field for people who's, who have lost their children. We're going 
going into the field for people who are thinking about shooting up everybody in their school. Do y'all understand that they're a part of our harvest field too? Let's go back to point number two. Bloodshed. Blood has been shed. And the Bible requires a response. It requires a response. We must mourn that innocent blood. You're going to see the scripture right there, Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 4. We must apply the blood of Messiah to atone for that innocent blood. You're going to see that all throughout the Torah, particularly in Deuteronomy. And it's we have to address it because the blood cries out from the ground. You can see that in Genesis chapter four. The Lord hears that blood. He hears the cries of every single drop of innocent blood, every single drop. He hears those cries. And, and it's not just, this is not a religious thing that I'm talking about right now. I'm not saying like, oh, you know, God's heart is breaking and it's a religious thing that he is, 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 is hearing the cries of innocent blood. Even though it's, it's very spiritual, it's a very spiritual thing. But those cries actually affect the whole universe. The whole way that the world and the universe flows and operates is affected by the cries of innocent blood that are going for. The entire universe is shifted by those cries. The entire universe. Demons are released. Plagues, consequences are released. Uh, 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 sin to another level is released. Things happen. When innocent blood cries out and it's not addressed, when it's not mourned, when it's not atoned. And those are responsibilities of citizens, mourning, and priest, atonement. And let's look at the posture that the Lord needs from us. Because remember what I told you, innocent blood must be mourned. We're going to mourn it and we're going to atone for it. But we got to deal with the mourning because y'all know us, we can be religious. We can say the prayers, take the communion. You know, um, and say, all right, we addressed it. But he doesn't need us to address it from that place. He needs us to address it from a place of a broken heart. This is what it says in Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 4. I deny, which means the Lord said to him, this is going to be a, 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 a man with a writing kit at his side. It could have been a pre-incarnate Yeshua or it was an angel, either one. He says, go throughout the city, through all Yerushalayim, and put a mark on the foreheads of the men who are sighing and crying over all the disgusting practices that are being committed in it. Now, in the next verses, everybody else gets destroyed by the judgment of God, but these people right here, the people who cried, who mourned over all the sin, all the innocent blood spilled, those ones were marked by God. And this is why I think it was a pre-incarnate Yeshua, because Yeshua is God's mark on the world. Yeshua is God the Father's mark on the world. He has marked the world by Yeshua. And if you want to be marked by the Lord, you got to mourn. And if your heart is so hard that you cannot cry anymore, your salvation is in danger. Because we have to mourn of those who mourn. And if you're running away from mourning, if you, you know, I'm not going to look at the images. I'm not going to look at the videos. I'm not going to read the testimonies. I got too much going on. I can't, I can't do this right now. I guarantee you, you're walking away from your priestly assignment as well. Because we cannot atone unless we have properly mourned. There's no need for us to even try to address atonement if we haven't mourned. Third and final point. Others headed toward death need rescue. We get in order, we mourn the bloodshed, then we got to get in position because there's others who are headed in that same direction and they need to be rescued. And there's some very important scriptures here. Jeremiah 12, 5 says, if you have raced with men on foot and they have worn you out, how can you compete with horses? If you stumble in safe country, how will you manage in the thickets by the Jordan? And let's just look at that one for just a second. Let's just look at that one. If you don't live in Uvalde, Buffalo, Laguna Woods, I'm sure there's been some challenges somewhere near you, but not these ones. But you can't even deal with what's happening in somebody else's neighborhood. 
what are you going to do if it comes to your neighborhood? What are you going to do as, as challenging times increase? Because it's going to get worse before our Messiah comes back. If, if you can't stand in your priestly post today, how are you going to stand in your priestly post two years from now, next month? Because it's getting harder and harder and worse and worse. Like it, the signs of the times are happening and they're happening rapidly because our Messiah is soon to come. If you're struggling now, how are you going to survive what we have to go through in order to prepare the way for him? Now, please know that you don't respond to that in your own self. You acknowledge that you're struggling and you allow God to minister to you. But you got to go to that pain and walk through it. You got to actually mourn, deal with that pain, not turn away from it. Feel what you got to feel. And then let him use you. That's the place where he needs us because when we are weak, that's when he's made strong. Now let's look at this other scripture. This is an important one. Proverbs 24, 10 through 12 says, if you falter in a time of trouble, how small is your strength? Rescue those being led away to death. Hold back those staggering towards slaughter. If you say, but we knew nothing about this, does not he who weighs the heart perceive it? Does not he who guards your life know it? Will he not repay everyone according to what they have done? Now, we just, we're just going to look at this in a natural sense for just a moment. Y'all know that they are doing investigations all over the nation at every one of these sites, especially in Uvalde. The response time. Look at that. What, what happened there? In, in this situation, next situation, where, 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 were, where were these officers? Where was this happening? Who knew and didn't say anything? Who, who, who didn't re report what was on Ramos's page or, 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 or Gendron's page? And everybody's being questioned. They went to the gun store where Ramos got his guns. And you understand what I'm saying? See, after the fact, people will hold you to account. Because you, you, you knew something. You saw something. But you didn't do anything. You didn't respond. See, people will hold you to account after the fact. But God holds us to account regardless. Even if, 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 if other people don't know that he had told us to get up that morning and pray, and we didn't do it, the Lord knows. And according to Ezekiel 33, that blood will be on our hands. And see, this is important that we recognize that because the Lord is saying, listen, I know y'all been comfortable and you used to comfort. That's over. It's over. We're in times of trouble. And I'm sending you in a harvest field in times of trouble. If you falter in this time, that means you don't have no strength at all. Anybody can be strong when it's comfortable. Everybody's strong when it's pleasant. Strength is strength when you are challenged. When your heart is breaking. That's when strength really is revealed. And this is what the Lord is requiring of us now because he's saying, if you don't come to me right now and talk to me about those weaknesses, when I need you and you can't show up, that blood will be on your hands. And I just want you to think about that. Think about everybody that's being questioned about these shootings right now. Think about the Lord questioning you on judgment day. Where were you? What was your response time? I woke you up at midnight. You didn't get up till six o'clock. That's a six hour delay. We mad at the officers for a one hour delay at Uvalde. But as intercessors, sometimes we give God days of delay. Sometimes it's a season of delay. Come on, y'all. We got to see it as the same thing. We got to see it as the same thing. Where were you when I was trying to engage you and put you on the wall? Where were you? Look at your response time. Not response to the situation. He's not talking about reaction. He's talking about response to his instructions. Prevention. Whew. Now let's look at these points. These are the things that we have to do because there are others being led toward death. They are headed right there. Gendron and Ramos are not uncharacteristic of our young people. We're gonna talk about that going forward. And, and neither is child. He's not uncharacteristic of, of the adults. There's lots of people with violence in their hearts and trouble in their souls right now. 
headed toward death and, and trying to take other people with them. But this is what the Lord needs us to do. Number one, he needs us to shore up our strength, which means get the support you need. Get support from the Lord, get support from other believers. It's time out for our mess. Let me, let, let me just say this. Oh my God. Don't let your sin addiction cause you to be off your post because you don't want to tell nobody what you're going through. You're struggling with some secret thing, but God has an assignment for you. You're struggling with some secret thing and that secret thing neutralizes you. So you can't carry out your assignment, but you don't tell nobody about the secret thing you're struggling with. So you can't actually fulfill your assignment. It's time out for that. It's time out for that. If you don't have somebody you can confess to and receive counsel and ministry without judgment, find somebody. Truth and spirit is here. That's what we do. Please understand that we cannot keep playing games with the Lord and with our souls. Everybody sins and falls short of the glory of God. I guarantee you there's nothing you're going through that us as leaders of ministry have going through. I guarantee you. You haven't fallen in some way that all of us have fallen. I guarantee you, nobody's going to be shocked and be like, oh my God, I can't believe that. No, it, no, no, no. I'm telling you, that's why we share our testimonies with y'all. We don't want to take up the whole service so we can't share everything. But we share as much as we can, little by little, just so you'll know that nothing surprises us. Nothing is going to cause us to, to judge you and, and shun you and turn our backs on you. But you got to do what the Lord says. We're going to hold you to account for that though. Please know it. We're not going to pat you on the back and say, keep going and doing what you're doing. No, 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 no. We're going to hold you to account to what the Lord says. Because that's how he does us. The Lord don't let us get away with nothing. But then he loves on us. Corrects us, loves on us, put us back on our post. That's exactly what we do with everybody else. Correct you, love you, put you back on your post. So your soul is right. So you can help somebody else's soul get right. Your sin and your weakness is not an excuse for you not being on your post. You're not saying nothing because the devil told you not to say nothing. Stop listening to the devil and get what you need so you can do what you need to do. Because he, he was still, God will still hold you accountable because he knows that there is a remedy for your sin and you walked away from the remedy. Being religious, being private. Y'all know I'm private. That's my business. Really? It's time out, y'all. It's time out. Some need more than just spiritual counsel. Believe me, we're very familiar with mental health issues too, where you need the, 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 the spiritual counsel and you need the therapy. Guess what? There's no shame in that either. Guarantee we will connect you with the therapist. I've told people, listen, I'm about to pray for you right now, but I need to make sure you call your therapist tomorrow because you need both. Mm -mm, don't, don't try to spiritualize this. I see a mental health crisis and I'm going to pray to you and then you need to deal with the mental health crisis. We're going to do both. We're not playing around with stuff, y'all. We don't have time to play, y'all. We don't have time to play, y'all. We got to deal with what we got to deal with. You having trouble in your marriage? Then you need help. It's not just y'all. It's a whole community. You having trouble with your child? You can't deal with that child? It's a whole community. It can't. We cannot keep trying to do stuff by ourselves because it's not working. We got to do it the way the scripture set it up, which was in community. And not in a religious community like those priests. Well, what is that to us? That is your problem. The devil is a liar. Judas hanged himself. And he could have been restored. Judas ain't have to go to hell. I know that messed y'all head up. Judas ain't have to go to hell. Judas ain't have to go to hell. He didn't have to go to hell. He could have repented to the right one, which is Yeshua. Would he have still died that day? Yep, yeah, but he'd have died on the cross right next to Yeshua and he'd have went to heaven. He still could have been redeemed. And the only reason why he would have died is because he would have had to go all the way to Yeshua while they was crucified. You understand what I'm saying? He had to go to Yeshua while they was beating him, while they was torturing him, and that would have caused him also to get crucified. But the point is, he'd have been with the Lord in paradise, just like the two thieves. He wouldn't be in hell right now. There is no soul that is beyond redemption as long as they still own this planet. That's when it's too late. If they're gone from this earth, it's too late. Our, our, we, we, our assignment is done now. But as long as they still here, we have assignments. And don't just look in, in, in the harvest field of, of the people that you think God has sent you to. Look at family members. Look at friends. Look at your, look at your friends' kids. Because sometimes they'll tell you stuff they won't tell their mama because they think their mom's going to go crazy. You understand what I'm saying? 
Your harvest feels right around you and it can still be a harvest for the blood. Y'all don't know what them kids are thinking. You don't know what's on them kids' minds. Parents always say, oh my God, I, I can't believe they did that. I never saw these signs. I never saw, parents always say that. But you watching that baby and you know, uh-uh, no. Mm-mm, mm-mm, something, mm-mm, I can't believe you. I saw that post you put on Facebook. Um, She is troubled. You smiling and you got the little hearts and I'm looking at this baby in this picture. She is troubled. Something's going on. And you start praying and you talk to the parents. The point is, y'all, the harvest field is right around us. It's right around us. We got to have our eyes open. And that's actually part of this message. Let's look at let's look at these last points. So that first one was show up your strength. Look at this, this second sub point. Recognize those headed to death. That's the very thing I was just talking about. Keep your eyes open. Parents, I don't care what your kids say. You better be friending them on social media. You better be checking their phones. And I don't do it sneakily. I don't do it sneakily. I'm like, Josh, give me your phone. Like, I, I'm not sneaking around. I'm not sneaking in his room. Give me your phone. <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? No, I, I got my kids' locations. I can get in their phones. No, no, we're not playing those games. You understand what I'm saying? No, 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 no. You got to develop a relationship where your kids know you actually have their back because that's what it's about. It's not about condemnation. We already talked about that. It's not about that. They're out here alone. How many people out here alone? They're not supposed to be alone. We got to recognize when they're headed toward death. Now, look at this this last sub point. Then we have to draw them into the kingdom, not just to ourselves, because the truth of the matter is we can't save anybody. We need saving every day, over and over and over and over and over and over and over. We got to point them to the king. And I don't care who who they are. I don't care if you think they ain't gonna like it. That's the answer that they need. Speak it in a language they can understand, but they need to be drawn into the kingdom. Now, we got to remember all this because we got some work to do, y'all. We got some work to do. We have a lot of work to do today. So now, that is the end of my exhortation, but it's certainly not the end of our work. That That was preparation for where we're going today. And so we're about to enter the inner court. All of that was outer court work. All that was preparatory work. That was all outer court work. Now we're about to go into the inner court. And you'll remember in the inner court, we enter into covenant with the Lord and we renew our covenant with the Lord. And let me, let me just pause here. Let me just pause here because I told y'all I'm, I'm not going, I'm not pushing down anything today. If it comes up, I'm I'm saying it, I'm releasing it, I'm going to experience it. The first thing that happens in the inner court is covenant with the king. That's the first thing that happens. Remember what I told y'all. The priest has set apart the outer court for the Gentiles. So what were they doing? They were keeping the Gentiles out of covenant. Because the covenant happens in the inner court, y'all. Don't happen in the outer. And this is why we do temple service in the order of the temple. And we tell you, don't stay out there. We're going in to see the king. We want you to come with us. We don't want you in the outer court feeling pushed out of worship, spectating while we're having these amazing experiences with God. You watching people worship, people crying, people experiencing the Lord every now and then. I'll show it on screen every now and then. And and you're like, but I, I don't feel nothing. I'm thinking about, you know, when I'm going to watch TV or blah, 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 blah. You're not experiencing anything because you're in out of court. It's because you're in out of court. You're supposed to journey into his presence. You're not supposed to stay in the out of court. You're supposed to be prepared. All this was preparation. Now you got to go in and you can't go no further until you enter into or renew your covenant with the Lord. Because everything else that happens after that is intimate. Notice this, we enter into covenant before we confess sins. Did y'all notice that? You know why? Because confession of sin is intimate. If, If there is no intimacy in confession of sins, condemnation stays, guilt stays, shame stays, because there's no intimacy, there's no restoration. Remember the woman 
who came and she grabbed hold of Yeshua's teeth. See, the woman with the issue of blood is like she stole the healing. That, that's kind of what it was because she kind of stole the healing and then she ran away. And he started looking for her and she started freaking out because she thought she was going to get in trouble because being a defiled woman, see, that blood made her defiled. She wasn't supposed to touch him because he was, he, was, he was holy. You understand what I mean? But she had touched his garment. She wasn't supposed to do that according to the religious leaders, right? So she, she comes back. She cowers. It was me. It was me because he had stopped everything. He won't go do nothing until he found her. She kind of, it was me. I did it. And he looks at her and he says, your faith has healed you. That was because he was like, you got a healing in the outer court. You weren't, you weren't intimate. Did you touch me? Yes. But you touched me, you ran away. Like, like, like a stranger. And he was like, no, I need you to come close. And I need you to know that I want you to come close. See, all the stuff we got to deal with today, you guys, we got to come close to him to deal with it. We can't do it afar off. So I'm going to tell you, I know you're like, I'm already saved. Say the prayer of salvation again. Say the covenant renewal again, if you're already saved. And if you're not, say it for the first time, because we got to deal with some stuff that's ugly and painful. And we can't do it without the intimate fellowship that comes with covenant. There's some stuff that the husbands and wives only share with each other. Nobody else knows but husbands and wives. You know why? Because of the level of intimacy in marriage. The Lord wants you to have that intimacy with him. So you can share stuff with him that you can't share with nobody else. Because the place he got to take you with too, y'all have to have already talked about it. Does he already know? Yes. But he needs you to have already conversed with him about it. Because he don't need the devil to be to bring it up. He needed to be already addressed. This is why we're doing what we're doing before Shavuot. We can't get to Shavuot and say, Lord, send us into the harvest fields. And he go, um, what about all that blood? Y'all didn't address none of that blood. See, no. We got to go in, be intimate, have tough conversations. Then we can go forward. So that's what we're going to do. Here we are, going into the inner court, not a far off, not pagan Gentiles, because Gentile has a connotation of pagan. No, we are sons and daughters of the Most High God. And we are entering into or renewing our covenant with him. So I want to encourage you to say this prayer of salvation aloud with your mouth. And my prayer for you is that you really, really believe it in your heart. Let's say it together. Heavenly Father, I come to you in prayer asking for forgiveness of my sins. I confess with my mouth and believe with my heart that Yeshua is your son. He died on the cross that I might be forgiven of my sins, reconciled in my relationship with you, live life abundantly on earth, and live eternally in your presence. I believe that Yeshua rose from the dead, and I ask you right now to come into my life, be my personal savior, and fill me with your Holy Spirit. Empower me to repent of my sins and worship you all the days of my life. Your word is truth. So I confess with my mouth and believe with my heart that I am born again and cleansed by the blood of Messiah Yeshua. In Yeshua's name, I pray. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer of salvation aloud with your mouth and believed it in your heart, you are saved right now. Right now. If you died right now, you would be with the Lord. And we want to pray with you and support you because this is the beginning of your journey, not the end. Every single day, you got to work out your salvation with fear and trembling and not get tripped up by the enemy into doubting God and, and receiving that condemnation, which causes us to walk away from salvation. God doesn't move, but we do move away from him. Yeshua is our salvation and we do move away from him. We do move away from our salvation. So we need to be in community. We need to be prayed for. We need support. Remember I told you this stuff happens in connection with each other, not apart from each other. If you prayed this prayer for the first time or you recommitted yourself to the Lord, go to invitationmvmt.org. Go to our salvation page. The prayer of salvation is there so you can remember what you prayed. There's a button to click to get some resources, some training to understand your salvation. It's seven videos that will really help you understand salvation, answer a lot of your questions. 
And there's a form to fill out. You can complete that form and say, I prayed the prayer. And we will pray for you by name every day. And we will connect with you to make sure that you have the resources that you need. You don't even have to join this ministry. It's not about that. It's about you not being alone, but receiving support and prayer on your journey. Now, we want to renew our covenant with the Lord because we want to understand this covenant, you guys. It's not a contract. It's not transactional. Thank God, because we, we, we always fall short of it. If it was transactional, we'd already, he already have taken the covenant away. But it's a love, it's a choice of love. He chooses to love us. And then he draws us and empowers us to love him back. And that is demonstrated by our obedience. And so we want to pray this aloud. Not as an arrogant assertion, like, man, we got this together. But really, as we're reading through it, allowing God to show us what he does for us and who he's called us to be for him. So when we confess and repent, we can confess that we haven't done this. We haven't been faithful in all of this. And we can let God help us to be more faithful. So let us say this aloud together as well. Today and every day, we commit ourselves to a covenant love relationship with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We submit ourselves to his perfect will for his purpose and glory. We will be his people and he will be our God. We are worshipers of the one and only true God in the form of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He is the head of every area of our lives. We are members of the body of Messiah redeemed by his sacrifice, carrying our own crosses and following him as his disciples. We are consecrated to the Lord, our God, dedicated to the fulfillment of his will and purpose, cleansed regularly of all that would defile us and set apart from the world and worldliness. We will be careful to follow all the commands of the Lord as detailed in his word and as we receive them individually and collectively from the voice and spirit of God. We will walk circumspectly in the world in all of our dealings as ambassadors for the kingdom of God and as beacons of light for others. We will not worship any person, being or thing in heaven or on the earth besides the Lord our God. We will not make covenants that are contrary to our covenant with God. Contrary covenants come in three forms. Covenants with spirits, including fear, pride, lust, falsehood, folly, sloth, greed, wrath, alcohol, drugs, and others, covenants with our flesh defeated and servants, and covenants with people who do not serve the Lord our God, such as friendship covenants, marriage covenants, and business covenants. We will serve the Lord with wholehearted devotion and willing minds, for he searches every heart and knows every motive. We bind ourselves to God through our covenant with him, accepting his love, his love and returning it faithfully. Now we're going to go into our liturgy, and I'm going to lead us in the liturgy where we invite the presence of God. And I'm leading us in our liturgy because Elder Tamise, as well as Elder Frederica, are on assignments today. They are doing the will of God in their community and addressing what the Lord is telling them to address. So we want to keep them in prayer as we go forward, singing this liturgy out of our own mouths to the Lord. We're going to sing the Shema, Mika Mocha. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. The words are always on the screen because we want you to learn them so that you can sing with us. But more than that, these three songs are weapons in your arsenal of warfare tools. And there are times when you're going to need to sing them to yourself. The Shema, will, it commands your soul to listen to God and to obey him. Mika Mocha brings your soul to the presence of God, to, to lift him up and exalt him above anything else that would compete for your attention. And Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, actually put you in a position where he can do that deliverance ministry to you, that healing ministry, the restorative ministry, and do what he needs to do in you. So I want to encourage you to sing them every time we sing them so they'll be in your spirit. So when the Lord needs to bring them back up throughout your week, he can do so. So let us sing these songs aloud together starting with the Shema, which comes out of Deuteronomy chapter six. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Baruch 
שם כבוד, מלכותו לעולם ועד. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be his name, his glorious kingdom, forever and ever. Amen. Mi chamoka, which means who is like our God. Mi chamoka ba'elim Adonai. Prepare me to be a sanctuary. <clears throat> Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. And with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary, Lord, for you. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, and with thanksgiving I'll be a living sanctuary Lord for you Hallelujah Thank you, Lord God. And as we remain worshipful, we want to view our points of repentance and reflection. We're repenting and reflecting. Everything today isn't about repentance. The repentance is to prepare us for the work we've got to do today. So let us repent for any disorder or disobedience 
that God has revealed in this season. So think specifically of what the Lord has been talking to you about. We've been in a place of consecration since the beginning of the biblical new year. What has God revealed in the area of disorder, disobedience to you? How has, is he calling you to repent? Repent for being out of position in God's kingdom. If he's revealed that to you, that there's a place he has for you, but you're not in that place. Repent for not wanting to mourn and for any numbness in your soul. Then ask God to break your heart as his heart breaks. Because we can't be numb going forward. We've got to feel the pain. We've got to feel lost. You have to feel. Feeling is a sign of being alive. Numbness is a sign of dying. Anything on your body, if it goes numb, the next stage, if it stays numb, is that it's going to die. And this is so important that we recognize that because numbness is not a good sign. We want to feel as the Lord feels. And when we're not feeling as he feels, we want to ask him to break his, break our heart again as his heart breaks, because that's going to take us right into our position. I want to encourage you to talk to God about your weaknesses and receive his strength. You don't have to hide them or be ashamed of them. Confess them to God and ask him to strengthen you in those areas. Receive renewed devotion to prayer, intercession, worship, and evangelism, and whatever other assignment God has given you. Like I have assignments to prophesy, have assignments to plant and to uproot. Receive renewed devotion in all of your areas of assignment received from God. Ask God to open your eyes to see the lost and to see warning signs of those heading toward death. Ask God to use you as part of the solution. And so with that, I'm actually going to turn it over to the Nichols to lead us in worship. But please know that we'll be, uh, they'll be worshiping and then it'll come back to me because we've got some stuff to pray about, some stuff to deal with. Of course, we've got our communions, but we've got to mourn. We've got to honor those who died. Like there's some work we've got to do. But just right now, as we pause, we've got to look at these points of repentance and reflection. We've got to repent. We've got to reflect. We've got to have these conversations with God. Then we can go into the assignment for today, which is actually to address the bloodshed because he's sending us into a harvest field that is covered in blood. We've got to address the bloodshed so we can actually rightly bring in the harvest of souls. But first, we personally have to repent and to reflect. And so I'm going to turn it over to the Nichols at this time to lead us in worship. And then I'm going to come back to you in a few minutes to incite us into more repentance and reflection before we move into our assignment for today. open so 
that we may know, so that we may know how you feel and what you see. The weight of our sin, the weight of our sin has risen unto you. Break our hearts open. We break our hearts open before you so that we may feel and we may see the weight of our sin. As you break our hearts open. Break our hearts open. You break our hearts open. As we feel what you feel, we see what you'll see. We acknowledge our sin. As the blood cries out to you, as the blood cries out to you, we can hear it, let us hear it, God, as the blood cries out to you. As the blood cries out to you, we will hear it. Let us hear it. As the cries go forth to you, as the cries go forth to you, we won't ignore it. As the cries go out to you, we won't numb it, we won't hear it. As the cries go up to you from this nation.
heart so bad to hear them forgive us for turning a blind eye forgive us for deaf ears Lord wait on you to repent, I've um, actually asked uh, Minister Joshua to share a word that the Lord gave him as he was seeking God after seeing the videos um, of the shootings in Uvalde, the, the Uvalde shootings um, the other day. And, and it's just important that we hear it because of what God is saying to us on today. And so I'm going to turn it over to him at this time that he can just read it aloud in our hearing. And I'll have the words that he's saying displayed on the screen um, so that while he's speaking, you can really take in what's being said. And so I'm going to ask you, Minister Joshua, if you could read it slowly, um, because I do want to make sure people can really um, take in what it is that you're saying. So I'm going to turn it over to you at this time. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Do you want me to read it now? Yes, but your, your picture just went out. There it is. That's good. Oh, gotcha. Okay, so I'm just going to display the screen. Okay, go ahead. We'll turn you off. We're in the same room now. I'm going to turn you off and I'm going to display my screen. Okay, I understand that. Okay, so you guys can see this in front of you. This is the Invitation Movement's website, and now it's there's a page called Bloodshed. Those are the victims of the tragedies, and this is what he's about to share. Go ahead, Joshua, you can share it now. Numbness. Endless void etched into eternity. The value of innocence depleted. Morals shattered to feed an insatiable hunger. No, an insatiable pain that won't leave. It tears the mind away from our clarity and reason. Innocent bystanders become casualties of the war between the unknown and the search of peace in the mind. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, as you guys know, Joshua's 17, which means he's one year younger than two of the shooters. 
in these instances. And as he was seeking God, this is what came into his heart. And this speaks, of course, of the soul condition of the shooters, but it also speaks of, of not just a generation, but even of our society, a numbness. And, 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 and that numbness allows evil to be pervasive. That numbness coming out of a brokenness, broken minds, broken hearts, broken souls, where, where innocence is no longer valued, morals are shattered and, and pain is unending. We've got to pray first concerning our own numbness because we cannot address the numbness around us until we address our own. Remember what I said, numbness is a sign of something dying. To feel, even pain, any feeling means there's life. And our Messiah is the way, the truth, and the life. And he came that we would have life. And having life sometimes means that we will experience pain. But if we don't experience the pain, we can't even experience the pleasure. Someone who is numb cannot even experience hope. We need to present that numbness to God. The, the, the worshipers were even singing about our dull ears and our hearts. And I heard it coming out in the worship, which is why I knew it was time for this. We've got to pray for ourselves. We've got to pray for this generation of young people that are being desensitized by images all day, every day, bombardments by the enemy. We've got to pray for those who are struggling in pain and have become numb. They don't value their lives or others. We have to pray. And so I'm going to turn it back over to the worship team, but I'm going to leave this up for a minute, and then I'm going to go back to our um, points of repentance and reflection. Keep ourselves protected 
did it all for us. Such pain for us. May we do the same. May we do the same. So you can heal us. So you can heal us. May we do it for them. out of love as you did it all for us we weep with you Lord we weep over the blood we weep over the blood we've seen our Messiah do the same to break your heart and I know that sounds crazy that I would pray that you've been allowing God to break your heart but it is it's from that place that you can pray prayers that move the heavens and change the earth numbness does not create prayers that change things in the earth and move God's heart it is feeling identifying that causes us to touch the heart of God and then pray prayers that will allow things to just shift in the earth quickly. Quickly. I remember asking the Lord a long time ago. I was like, Lord, you know, I, I can ask you for something over and over and over and over and over. But if I cry, you answer me right then. Immediately. Immediately you move. And he told me, he said, because I'm moved by your tears. And that's a very real thing. We are his precious children. And every face that you just saw, his precious children. 
And so I want to encourage you now to, to posture yourselves for prayer because it is time for us to pray. It's time for us to, to seek the Lord and allow him to minister to us and also through us. And so this is our assignment on today. I told you guys, we're going to take nine communions and pray nine types of prayers. I'm going to pray every time, but I want to ask that at least one person also pray in each one of these posts. If you're on the Zoom now, and if you're at home, certainly you can pray in agreement, everybody, even on Zoom, be praying in agreement with every prayer. But I'm going to ask some people to actually open their mics and pray aloud. The first thing we have to do is offer a sin offering for ourselves. And so that is a prayer that covers anything, anything for us, because we're about to pray. We've got to offer a sin offering first for us so that our, the rest of our prayers be acceptable to the Lord. And I'll pray that prayer first so you understand. But if there's someone else who also wants to pray a sin offering for us right now, us intercessors, us, us believers, us prayer warriors, those of us who are praying right now, Think about that. Remember, you can send me a message in the chat saying which prayer you want to pray. Then if you want to pray in accordance with me to offer a burnt offering for deliverance from terror, then you guys will remember the burnt offerings come out of Leviticus chapter one. And in our burnt offerings workbook, we specifically go through that burnt offering. We pray some specific things. But just in general, if you want to pray about deliverance from terror in this nation, we're actually praying for United States and Israel. We always have to lift up Israel. Then you can let me know in the chat. Send me a private message in the chat saying, I want to pray about that. If you want to pray, the bull offering is a burnt offering, which is addressing the innocent bloodshed. And so if you want to pray for the bloodshed in Buffalo, New York, send me a message telling me you want to pray about that. If you want to pray about the bloodshed at the Taiwanese church, the Taiwanese Presbyterian church in Laguna Woods, California, send me um, a message about that. If you want to pray about the bloodshed in Uvalde, Texas, send me a message telling me that. If you want to just pray about deliverance for the United States, just bloodshed in the U.S., because there's lots more. Like I told you, this is not the beginning and this is not the end. There's lots of bloodshed in the United States. If you want to pray about that, send me a message in the chat. If you want to pray about Israel, blood atonement for Israel, deliverance for Israel, because we always have to lift up Israel. Our peace is bound up with Israel's peace. Send me a message in the chat. If you want to pray for leaders, a ram offering, that's an intercessory offering for leaders in these states and in the nations overall, USA and Israel. Send me a, a message telling me you want to pray about that. And if you want to offer the sin offering prayer at the end, which actually covers everybody, anything we miss, that's what that prayer does. That sin offering covers anything we miss, praying for all these people in all these locations. Um, just like the sin offering, we pray for ourselves and we pray for everyone for whom we're interceding. Send me a message concerning that. Now, while you're seeking God about what you should pray, now this would be aloud and on camera. If you're seeking God, or as you're seeking God about if you should pray aloud and on camera in one of these prayers, and then of course I'll offer the communion after the prayer is over. But if you wanna just offer the prayer or a prayer, send me that message in the chat. While you're praying about that, I'm gonna take you to Daniel chapter nine. Because in Daniel chapter nine, we have a model for how we should pray these prayers. And, and I want to just, let's go through the model. I'm going to say a few things as we go through this model. So I'm going to read verses one through five, and then I'm going to read verses 17 through 19. And this is in the complete Jewish. It reads as, well, actually, I'm going to read it in the NIV. It reads as follows. In the first year of, of Darius, son of Xerxes, a Mede by descent, who was made ruler over the Babylonian kingdom, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood from the scriptures, according to the word the Lord had given to Jeremiah the prophet, that the desolation of Jerusalem would last 70 years. So I turned to the Lord God and pleaded with him in prayer and petition in fasting and in sackcloth and ashes. I prayed to the Lord my God and confessed, Lord, the great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keep his commandments, we have sinned and done wrong. We have been wicked and have rebelled. We have turned away from your commands and laws. 
Then we want to go down to verses 17 through 19. And in NIV, they read, Now our God, hear the prayers and petitions of your servant. For your sake, Lord, look with favor on your desolate sanctuary. Give ear, our God, and hear. Open your eyes and see the desolation of the city that bears your name. We do not make requests of you because we are righteous, but because of your great mercy. Lord, listen. Lord, forgive. Lord, hear and act. For your sake, my God, do not delay because your city and your people bear your name. Now, what we learn from Daniel is that he first starts off by reading the scriptures. So we know he's praying rightly before God because he started in the scriptures. And in the scriptures, Jeremiah had prophesied that the temple will be destroyed for 70 years, but then God will restore them. So he knows that time has been complete. He's reading the scriptures. So he's praying rightly before the Lord. If we have a, a base in the Bible and our hearts are open to what God wants to do, we will pray his will back to him. That's what Daniel is doing. He's praying God's will back to him. Then he's, he's praying, he's petitioning God, he's already fasting, and he's wearing sackcloth and ashes, meaning he has humbled himself before God. He's not lifted up, he's not exalted, he's humbled. Then he prays and he begins to confess sin, the sin of his people. They are his people. He's, he has authority because they are his people, his people Israel. He's a part of them. But he's also taking responsibility for the sin. Though we know Daniel hadn't done this. He was a righteous man. He takes responsibility. The authority is in the confession. Authority, there's no authority in pointing the finger. There's no authority in blaming. You can't pray, God, those people over there, forgive them. Unless they wronged you. But if you're not involved, you have no authority in the prayer. It's when you accept responsibility for the sin as a, as a fellow citizen that you then have authority. That's why we pray we. Because the reality is if it's happening in our community, if it's happening in our nation, in some way we are a part of it. So we, we accept that responsibility in humility. And then our authority comes forth in the prayer. And then you see in verses 17 through 19 that Daniel acknowledges that we don't deserve it. He's like, we don't deserve for you to answer us. We're not righteous enough. We don't deserve for you to answer these prayers. But because of your goodness, because of your faithfulness, because of your righteousness, Lord God, because of your mercy, I'm asking you not only to listen to my prayer, but to forgive us, to hear and to act, to do something about this. For your own sake, Lord. See, this is a, a beautiful model for us in prayer. And so I want to encourage you to let God minister to your heart so that we can pray. And after each prayer, we'll take communion. And so I, I do see that some people have put some things in the chat. And so what I want to do is I want to pray over <clears throat> um, these elements. We got to pray over the elements, pray of ourselves, and pray of the elements first. Then we can go into these prayers that are in front of us right here. And so uh, please know that when we pray for Buffalo, the, the, the victims of the Buffalo shooting will be on the screen. When we pray for Laguna Woods, the victim of Laguna Woods uh, shooting is going to be on the screen. Also the picture of everyone else who, who was wounded. When we pray for Uvalde, the victims of the Uvalde shootings are going to be on the screen. I um, just want you to be prepared for that because we're lifting them up by face, by name before the Lord and that blood that was shed. And so uh, I want to encourage you right now, if you if you are going to take communion, if you have your communion elements, I want to encourage you to get them in front of you. And if you got one big piece of matzah, break it into nine pieces and only have with you the matzah and the grape juice that you are using for this communion because you don't want to sanctify everything, just what, just what you're about to use in this communion. And so we want to pray for ourselves and we're going to pray over these elements and sign the shofar over them. I um, mean, if you have your shofar, you can do that. Sign the shofar over your elements as well where you are. Um, but if not, of course, keep your microphone. I mean, keep this open and you'll hear my shofar sounding over your elements. And so let us pray. Um, and then we'll come back to this screen in just a moment as you guys are thinking about this and praying about this. Father, we lift you up and we worship you, Lord God. We come before you even now knowing that there's blood in our land, 
which means that there's blood on the hands of your people, Lord God, there's sin in your house, there's sin in our nation, Lord God, and we come before you desiring to offer an acceptable sacrifice unto you. And so we ask, Lord God, that you cleanse us with the blood of Messiah, that you remove the defilement from us and keep pricking our hearts that we would have your heart, keep touching our minds that we would have your mind. Forgive us for our sins, our transgressions, our transgressions, Lord God, the, the, the heart motivations, the thoughts that were not of you, Lord God. Forgive us for the things that we promised to do, that we vowed to do, we did not do. Forgive us, Lord God, for every sin of, of, of omission and of commission, Lord God, the, the things that we, we didn't do that we should have done, the things that we did do that we shouldn't have done. Break generational curses off of us, Lord God. Focus us in on you, Lord God, and help us to be exactly who you've ordained us to be. Atone for our sin by the blood of Messiah and anoint us afresh as your priest. We lift up this matzah before you even now. And, and I praise the Lord that he is using us as his vessels. And as his priest, we lift up the elements before you, the elements that we have. If, if, if we have matzah, we lift up the matzah before you. We ask that you atone for any sin committed when it was being harvested and produced and distributed. Atone for it by the blood of Messiah. We ask that you anoint it afresh to be the striped, pierced, and broken body of our Messiah. And we praise you for that in Yeshua's name. We speak the blessing over the matzah. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who's given us the bread from the earth. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. If you have grape juice or wine, we want to lift that up before the Lord. Father, we lift up the fruit of the vine before you. We ask that you atone for all sin done, committed against it or with it as it was being harvested, produced, and distributed. We ask that you atone for it by the blood of Messiah. We ask that you anoint it afresh to be the blood of our Messiah, that blood of the new covenant that is poured out for us. We praise you, hallelujah, Lord God, for these elements. And we honor you in Yeshua's name. We pray the, pray the blessing over the cup. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu, Melech HaAlam, Bori Puri HaGafen, B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach, Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who's given us the fruit of the vine. In Yeshua's name we pray, amen. And now I'm going to sound the shofar over these elements and over us. Because these are the grain and the drink offering. We're actually the burnt offering. Yeshua satisfied the, 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 the biblical requirements, but we're offering ourselves as living sacrifices. Now, we're going to um, offer the first sin offering to the Lord. Um, now, there's a couple of people who said they wanted to offer sin offerings. Let me know if you were talking about the first one, which is for us, or if you want to offer the sin offering at the end for everyone for whom we're praying. The first one. Yes. Okay. Praise God. Amen. And so I'm going to put this back on the screen so you guys can actually see what we're doing. <clears throat> it won't be on the screen the whole time, but I do want to remind you in case you want to pray one of these prayers, we'll be coming back and forth to this, to this screen. Um, but this first one that we're doing is the sin offering for us. This is for us as priests. Um, and um, Minister Clark said she wanted to offer the sin offering for us, correct, Minister Clark? And so I'm going to ask her to unmute and pray, and then I'm going to do the offer the communion after she does that. Um, I would be praying um, um, Psalms 951. Um, Adonai, I just ask you right now to have mercy upon us, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercy. Blot out our transgression and wash us thoroughly from our iniquity and cleanse us from our sins. 
but we acknowledge our transgression. Our sin is always before us. Against you only have we sinned and done this evil in your sight, that we might be found just when we speak and blameless when you judge. Behold, we were brought forth in iniquity and in sin our mothers conceived us. Behold, you desire truth on the inward parts and the hidden parts. You, you will make us to know wisdom. Purge us with hyssop and we shall be cleansed. Wash us and we shall be whiter than snow. Make us to hear the joy and the gladness that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from our sins and blot out our iniquity. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within us. Do not cast us away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from us. Restore to us the joy of our salvation, uphold us by your generous spirit. Then we will teach transgressors your ways and sinners shall be converted to you. Deliver us from the guilt of bloodshed, O God, mm. the God of our salvation, and make our tongue sing aloud of your righteousness, Lord. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall show forth your praise. But we do not desire, you do not desire sacrifice or else you would give it. You do not delight in burnt offering. The sacrifice that you got, a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. These, O oh God, you will not despise. Do good in your good pleasure in to Zion. Build the walls of Jerusalem. Then you we then you shall be pleased with the sacrifice of righteousness, with burnt offering, whole burnt offering. Then they shall offer bulls on your altar. And Father, I just thank you right now, Lord God, to forgive us. God, just forgive us, Lord God. Forgive us, Lord God, for you know, not keeping your commandments, Lord. When we messed up in one area, we messed up in all of them, Lord God. Forgive us, Lord God, for just being a spirit of apathy, lethargic, Lord God. Forgive us for becoming complacent, Lord God. Forgive us for not walking in obedience, Lord God. Forgive us for not seeking you with our whole hearts, Father God. Forgive us for not seeking your kingdom first, Lord God. God, forgive us, Lord God, when we saw things, Lord God, and we just brushed it off, Lord God. Father God, forgive us, Lord God. Forgive us, Lord God, for not getting up when you told us to give up, Lord God, and pray and intercede, Lord God. God, forgive us, Lord God, for not loving you with our whole hearts, Lord God, and loving ourselves and loving our neighbors you can commanded us to do, Lord God. God, forgive us, Lord God, for being prejudiced. Lord God, even among ourselves in the body of Christ, God, in the body of you, sure. Lord God, forgive us for having jealousy, being jealous towards one another's anointing, Lord God. God, forgive us today, Lord God, for not paying our tithes and our offering, Lord God, that you may have meat in your house, God, that we may be a blessing to others, Lord God. God, forgive us, Lord God. Forgive us for not bringing our first fruits to you, Lord God. God, forgive us, Lord God, for lying on each other, Lord God. Forgive us for being jealousy of one another the anointing, Lord God. Forgive us for not recognizing who we are in you in the kingdom, Lord God. God, forgive us today, Lord God. Forgive us, Father God. Forgive us, Lord God, for not honoring one another, Lord God. Forgive us today, Father. Forgive us for not studying your word to show ourselves approved, Lord God, that we may be able to rightly divide the word of truth. Lord God, forgive us, Lord God, for not having the tongue of the learn. God, to be able to give someone a word of encouragement in season and out of season, Lord God. Forgive us, Lord God, for living in fear, Lord God, for being afraid to share the good news of Yeshua with people, Lord God. God, forgive us, Lord God, for just God for um uh, 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 for, 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 for prostituting our anointing, Lord God, always looking for someone to give us something back, Lord God, when we have thought we have done something good. Lord God, forgive us, Lord God, when we thought our righteousness was all right, Lord God, when you said in your word, Lord God, that our righteousness is like filthy rags, Lord God, forgive us, Lord, forgive us, Lord God. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord God, for not praying for each other, Lord God. God, forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord God. Forgive us, Father. Forgive us, Lord. Because, Lord, I know, God, you have us everywhere, Lord God. Forgive us, God, for overeating when you told to turn down our place, Lord God. Forgive us, Lord God. Forgive us, Lord God, for not giving, Lord God. Forgive us for turning off our cell phone when you told us to leave it on because we don't want to be disturbed in the middle of the night, Lord God. Forgive us, Father God. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord God. Forgive us, Father God, of turning our backs on you, Lord God. Mm. Forgive us, Lord. I know forgive me, Father. Forgive me, God, because when I messed up in one area, I messed up in them all, Lord God. Forgive me, Lord God, mm, 
Forgive us, Lord God. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord God, for not speaking to our neighbors. For not even, even in TIS, Lord God. Forgive us for not even checking on one another, Lord God. Forgive us, Lord. Mm. Forgive us, Lord God. Mm. Forgive us, God, if we show favoritism to one another, Lord God. There's no favoritism in the kingdom, Father. Forgive us today, Lord God. Wash us and create in us a clean heart. You are the God of mercy, Lord God. You are long suffering with us, Lord God. And your desire that no man should perish, God. That every man should have eternal life, Lord. So forgive us for not even evangelizing, Lord God, even in our families, Lord God. You say to start in Jerusalem first, Lord God, to start in our families, Lord God. Forgive us, Lord God. Forgive us for the spirit of uh, 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 idolatry, spiritually idolatry, Lord God. Mm. Forgive us, Lord, today. Forgive us and wash us, purify us, Lord God, with the blood of Yeshua. And this is our prayer in Yeshua's name. Amen. And amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you're able to um, lift up your mantra and your, your group, if you have them, if you have them. Hallelujah. We want to take communion now for ourselves because surely we are guilty in every way, in every way that Evangelist Clark just prayed and more. But we thank you, hallelujah, that, that as we break this monster, you break the power of sin and death off of us, including generational curses. You break hard heartedness and numbness off of us. You break complacency and apathy off of us. You break compromise off of us. And every other sin, perversion, secret sin, deception, all of it. We thank you that by the stripes of Messiah Yeshua, we are healed so healed that you will accept every other prayer that we pray. Father, we thank you for it. And we receive this matzah even now. We see the body of our Messiah, even those who don't have matzah with them. I thank you, Lord, as they're praying that you're filling them with yourself, Yeshua. We partake of you now. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Father, we lift up the cup before you, the blood of the new covenant, so that the Torah, your word, can be written in our hearts and our minds, Lord God. Shift our thinking that we would have the mind of Messiah. Shift our hearts that we would have your heart, Lord God. Cleanse us with the blood of Messiah. Tone for sin in us so that our prayers might be acceptable in your sight. We praise you for it and we receive it even now, Lord God, as you refill us with even more of your spirit, that we will be seated in the heavenly places as we pray. In Yeshua's name, we receive it. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, we are going to pray a burnt offering for deliverance from terror. Now, this is not a normal burnt offering. This is not one of the ones that we usually offer. Um, and so I, I want you guys to remember that burn offering structure. I'm actually going to go right through it because terror is the foundation of this entire thing. It's all terrorism. It's homegrown terrorism, but it's still terrorism, which I shared on, on the two Bible studies. Terrorism does two things. It intimidates and it destabilizes. That's why it's often random, disconnected, uh, and, and, and just merciless. Because that it, 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 it seeks to intimidate and destabilize, which causes all types of fear and, and problems within a community. And so we want to pray for deliverance from that, that, that spirit of terror. And I want to encourage you, because we're going to pray um, for concerning the shootings in Buffalo, New York, Laguna Woods, California, and Uvalde, Texas next. In that order, because that's the order in which they happen. May 14th, May 15th, May 24th. If you live in or lived in one of these states, I want to encourage you to volunteer to pray about that because you have a, a different authority. Because again, these were your neighbors, whether you live there now or lived there before. And, and not just in the city, but in the state. 
I want to encourage you to put it in the chat if you're willing and you live or lived in one of these places to let me know because we want to pray from the place that the Lord has ordained for us. So I'm going to be praying for deliverance from terror while you guys prayerfully are praying about that. Like, honestly, the Lord was actually reminding me of that. There's times when we live places when he remember, like it was like a summer. It was just a few months or whatever, whatever, whatever we actually lived. Like, oh man, I did live. I did live there. Let him minister that to you because if so, he wants you to pray out of that authority, out of being a, a community member to the citizens who were shot down. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And so we are going to pray in that stead, and I'm going to do the burnt offering. We're going to offer the burnt offering for terror. And we got to start. You guys remember, we're in a worshipful position. We've offered ourselves as sacrifices. So we know, of course, that's the first thing that's supposed to happen. But the next thing that we see with the burnt offering is that we got to drain it of blood. It's the first thing you have to do with the burnt offering is you got to drain the blood out of that burnt offering. What is the burnt offering in terror? Why do we like it? Why do we, why do we like terror? Why do we put up with terror? What, 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 what happens in us as a nation, as a people, that terror has become a tactic. Like you heard on the Senate floor, you heard from so many others. This doesn't happen in other nations like this. It doesn't happen in other nations like this. It happens in the United States for a very specific reason. What is the blood? And the reality is, is that it makes people who feel powerless feel powerful. That's the blood. People who feel powerless feel powerful. And, and that is not, it's not a true power because they wind up losing everything. They lose everything. It's a lie. It's a deception from the enemy. But that's the reality. And we've got to even look at ourselves. When if we allow sin to, to, to make us misbehave, do, do something that, that God would not have us to do because we felt powerless. And that sin made us feel powerful. That's the blood. That's the blood. Amen. That is the blood that, that goes with terror. And I see people coming in um, telling me that the states that they live in, please know I'm going to call on you. <laughs> please know if you put it in the chat that you live in a certain state, I'm definitely going to call on you. And there may be multiple people. It's okay if we have multiple prayers. That is okay. And so as we look at this, as we look at deliverance from terror, we want to look at and deal with the fact that there are times when we feel powerless and the enemy gives us a, a, um, a way to make ourselves feel powerful in a moment. That's what terror does. It makes a person who feels powerless feel powerful, but it's not true. It's not real. It's not, it's not real power. Those guns and that mass destruction, it's not real power because eventually, immediately, right after that moment, they lose everything. Sometimes even their lives and souls, other times their freedom, but they lose everything. The next thing is to skin it. To reveal what's covering it up. What's covering up terror? Why have we not really addressed terror in this nation? Well, there's a few things. And, 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 and even being a conservative, I politically I identify myself as a conservative because I vote biblically. But coming from that stance, the reality is the gun lobby is a real big deal in our nation. It is. We can't pretend like it's not. Because uh, there is common sense ways of dealing with arms, but that's not what we're doing. And that shows that money, greed, somebody put it in the chat, that greed is a part of the skin. The skin, the skin of greed is covering up terror. And it's not, it didn't just start now with the gun lobby. It didn't just start now. The skin of greed caused terror attacks against First Nations at the foundation of this nation. The sin of greed caused terror attacks against African peoples. African against African selling into slavery, that was greed. European against African dragging into slavery and enslaving for generations, it was all greed. Greed is the skin because then it becomes, it's not personal, it's business. Greed is the skin. Greed is why we won't look at terror the way we need to look at it in this nation. It's because of greed. We have to pray against all of this. If we cut it to pieces, what do we, what do we actually see? If we thoroughly dissect terror, what do we actually see? Well, I'm going to tell you something that's important for us to note about this. When we thoroughly dissect terror, is that it gives people some type of reasoning. Like, you know, Peyton Gendron had this reasoning of the replacement theory. 
Um, and, 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 and Chow had this reasoning of the issues in Taiwan and, and, and China. And, and, and Ramos had some type of issue. We still haven't even learned completely what his issue was. But there was some type of issue that he, that he had. But the reality is terror is indiscriminate. You know, Gendron feels like he targeted the population, but he still wound up shooting a white man and apologized for it. Because terror is indiscriminate. Bullets don't care who they hit. Terror doesn't care who it attacks. That spirit of terror wants everybody, even the terrorists themselves, which is why many commit suicide when it's over. Terror is indiscriminate, but it lies to people who take on that, that, that character, that, that the assignment, that demonic assignment of terror, it lies to them and gives them some type of vision, some type of goal, like it's set in that way. And we've got to look at it in our own lives. We may not be terrorists, but when we have them violent, whenever we say yes to violence, we say yes to violence, even verbal violence, because we're directing it towards some person or some people who we think deserve it. But violence doesn't care. Once we let violence in, it takes out everybody, including us. That's how it works. And it's important that we recognize that because if we don't recognize it, we, we can't really address this real this principality for what it really is. Now we got to cut off the head. Now, what is the head of terror? There actually is a, a, a principality that we pray about all the time that is the head of terror. And it's called violence and denial. That's the head of terror. That's the strong man. It's that principality of violence and denial. And we actually, we, in, our, in our Restoring Fivefold Ministry training, which is going on right now, we actually pray about, that's one of the principalities we pray about, where it denies the truth and it walks in violence as a tactic. Deception, deception, deception. But violence actually really, it, 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 it tells you, you better not address this deception. That's what terror is. Terror is based in that. That is the head of it. It's violence and denial. Denial of the truth and violence to cover it up, which means it can never agree with God because Yeshua is the truth. He's the way, the truth, and the light. And then we see that we've got to cut away the fat. What are the fillers? What's all the fluff that, that, that keeps us separated from God and allows us to keep going on? Well, the reality is we've desensitized ourselves so much through uh, through, through, through certain uh, uh, disconnected activities, like social media, for example. People will say stuff on social media that they would never say to a person face-to-face. -face. It makes them feel disconnected enough to be bold to, to, to misbehave. And, and we become that disconnected in our society, disconnected from each other and disconnected from God, that we don't feel the check in our spirit that is natural. Everybody's born with a conscience, and that's the spirit of the living God, even people who are not yet believers. But we have so desensitized ourselves to that because we pulled ourselves away from each other and from God so much that fat is the distance way before social distancing. The fat is the distance because it emboldens us in our sins. And now as we continue to look at this, we've got to look at the inner parts because the inner parts have to be washed. Now, what are the inner parts? Let's, let's look at that for a, a, just a minute because that's the big deal. That's going to be the real thing happening inside of us. Those who commit not just acts of terror, but violence and denial, what's really happening? There's a rebellion against God. There's fear. Exactly. Fear was the next thing I was going to say. There's, there is loneliness. Absolutely. There's ostracization. There's shame. There's low self-esteem. There's a cover-up, a deception. Don't want you to see what's really going on. There's pain. There's brokenness. As in the poem, um, the prophetic poem that, that came forth through um, Minister Joshua, just unending pain, 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 never being addressed because only our God can address it. That has to be washed away because it cannot be solved otherwise. And so we want to pray about all of these things. We want to release all this in the fire and we want to offer a burnt offering to the Lord. So I want to encourage you guys to get your elements. If you have them, if not, just pray in accordance with us. Whew. As we, as we seek God for deliverance from terror, Lord God, we need terror to come down in our land. Homegrown terror, especially because that is the fruit of the sin in this nation. We ask, Lord God, that you drain that blood of wanting to feel powerful. Because it is a lie. It's a cover. It's not the truth. Drain that blood of wanting to feel powerful, Lord God. 
out of out of our society. Power, power. It's all about power. Lord God, drain that blood that we would we would actually revel in being humble. That we would would desire to submit. We would feel the safety and security of submission. We thank you for that, Lord God. We ask that you skin terror and that you reveal the greed that has allowed it to continue because it's been greed since the colonists hit these shores in 1607 and it is greed today on the Senate floor. It's still greed. It's greed. And in and, and the gun shop, when they look in the face of a troubled 18 year old and sell him two, two uh, assault rifles with a ridiculous amount of ammo, that's greed. It's just greed. It's greed covering this up, Lord God. Deliver us from that greed. Cut terror to pieces and help us to see that though it gives us a focus and an assignment, it is indiscriminate and wants to destroy everybody, even those it uses. It wants to destroy everybody. It does not care about anybody. And it has no goals but destruction. We ask, Lord God, that you reveal that, Lord God. Open our eyes as a nation to it. We ask that you cut off the head of terror, which is violence and denial, that we would stop denying the truth. But that we would accept the truth, even if the truth is painful, even if the truth is corrective, Lord God. Even if the truth is humbling. Even if we feel ashamed, let us run to you and trust you enough, Lord God, that we would rely on the truth rather than accepting a lie and fighting to defend the lie. It's the head of terror. Let us release violence and denial to you. We ask that you uproot violence and denial, that you bind it up and cast it in a dry arid places, Lord God, that we might be free of this stronghold of terror in Yeshua's name. We ask, Lord God, that you cut away the fat, the distance, the devaluing of of, of humans and interaction because we're so far from each other that, that, that we become desensitized to our effects on each other, that we stop caring about the consequences of the way we interact with each other. Lord God, remove that fat and bring us back to intimacy, first with you, but then also with each other. Help us even to look at ourselves. Help us to even have an intimate relationship with ourselves where we we look at ourselves honestly. Instead of trying to hide everything and run from everything, even in our own souls. Bring us back to intimacy, Lord. And wash our inner parts. Wash the low self-esteem, the loneliness, the depression, Lord God. Wash away the fear, Lord God, and the shame terrible shame, the sin sickness and the, and the hidden secret lives, Lord God, the secret sins, Lord God. Wash our inner parts, Lord, that we would have no room for terror in them as a people, as a nation, Lord God. We lift up this matzah before you, Lord God. And we ask even now, hallelujah, Lord God, that as we break it, you break terror off of our nation. For by the stripes of Messiah Yeshua, we are healed. We ask that you heal this nation all the way from the terror attacks against First Nations, the terror attacks against Africans and African Americans, to the terror attacks against immigrants, the terror attacks against different people groups, the terror attacks against women, the terror attacks against children, Lord God, the terror attacks all the way up to today. And homegrown terror and hate crimes. Lord God, we thank you that you break terror off of us and that you refill us, Lord God. We fill us with yourself, Lord God, that we might be healed in all of these deep innermost places. In the soul of our nation, heal us, Lord God. For you said by your stripes, Messiah Yeshua, we were healed. Why? Because you already paid for it. We thank you for it and we receive that even now in Yeshua's name. Amen. cup before you. We thank you for the blood of Messiah that atones for all sin because so much blood has been shed because of terror. Innocent blood, just terrible, terrible bloodshed. There are unmarked graves all over this nation for bloodshed. There are people thrown into rivers and, and waterways, eaten by animals to get rid of the evidence. There's so much blood. 
We ask that you atone for this blood in the name of Yeshua, Lord God, and deliver us from this. We don't want you to just cover it. We want you to deliver it, uproot it, and refill us with yourself. Humble submission to you and love for each other. We receive that in Yeshua's name. Amen. And love for self, Lord God. We receive love for self. Because we can't love anyone else if we don't love ourselves. Submission to you, love for you, and love for self. Love for our fellow man. We thank you for it in Yeshua's name. Amen. And now we are going to pray for, um, pray about the innocent blood that was shed in Buffalo, New York. And I want to take you guys back to the PowerPoint because I want to show you of course, the victims um, of the Buffalo shooting. Um, and there are some New Yorkers that are um, in the Zoom room with us that, that have lived in New York um, over their lifetime. And so I'm going to ask them to pray. So I'm going to actually go in order. Uh, well, let me tell you the order that I'm going to go in. Um, I'm going to ask Michelle to pray um, uh, about New York. I'm going to ask um, Evangelist uh, Clark to pray about New York. And then I'm going to ask Apostle Nikki to, 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 um, <clears throat> to close it up. Let me make sure. Did you say New York? No, you said, nope. You said the other two states. Sorry about that. <laughs> so I'm going to let uh, event, it's going to be Michelle and then um, Evangelist Deborah Clark. And then I'm going to come back and do the communion. So I'm going to go to Michelle first and I'm going to put up on the screen um the the victims and we want to pray um in accordance with um these prayers and so we'll start with michelle i don't see michelle can you open up your um camera I don't see you. We're, we're here but for some reason you're not able to open the camera that's fine okay so i'm going to share my screen so they can see uh, the victims and now okay we can hear you so go ahead and begin to pray michelle and then um or oh, and it, it, if, I don't know if you also live there, Watson, but you guys go ahead and pray, and then we'll turn it over to, to Evangelist Clark. You are sovereign, and you were there. You saw everything that took and we repent right now for those that um, didn't stand up or didn't say anything. Lord God. We repent right now, Lord God, for the bloodshed, Lord God, that has taken place. Lord God, the parents are, 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 are crying out for their children. The people are crying out for their loved ones. Even now, God, and I ask that you would forgive us. Forgive us, Lord God, for not, for not listening to the promptings of your voice. You love us, you love us so much, God. And the, the ones, Lord God, that have died, Father, your heart breaks for it because you see how it has affected their loved ones. Their lives were taken before time, Lord. And we just ask that you would forgive us. We ask that you would cleanse us. Lord God, Father, we ask that you would bring healing, Lord God, to those, Lord God, that have lost the loved ones, oh God. We cry out right now, Lord God, Father, because we're merciful, Lord God. Father, their smiles are gone. Their smiles are gone. They're missing in their families even now. But I ask you even now, Lord God, Father, that you would forgive us and cleanse us, Lord God, that we would apply the blood of Messiah to these lives, Lord God, Father, that have um, been snuffed out, Lord we repent right now, God. We're crying out for mercy. We're crying out for mercy. We're crying out for forgiveness. Lord God, Father, we're crying out for not pleading the blood of the for not pleading your blood and the protection of your spirit over New York, Lord. You told us that wherever we live, we have authority. Wherever we have stood, we have authority. And Lord, we did not fully comprehend all that you have because even living in Virginia, we can still cry out. Because it's not us, but it's your word and it's your spirit, Lord God, that covers. So we repent right now and we ask that you would forgive us, Lord God, and we ask that you would just 
cover the other people that are in New York, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, that you would bring um, your heart, Lord God, to those believers, Lord God, Father, that are there and us, Lord God, that have once lived in New York. And I ask you right now, Lord God, Father, that you would cover and protect, heal, Lord God, the families of those that have passed away, Lord God. Heal them, Lord God, bring healing to their souls, bring comfort to their souls. We thank you for it in Yeshua's Amen. I'm going to turn it over to Evangelist Clark. Father, right now in the name of Yeshua, Father, first of all, I touch and agree with the prayer that my sister just prayed for New York, Lord God. Although during the time of my life when I was living there, Lord, I was I was a sinner, Lord God. And so, God, I ask you to forgive me personally, Lord God, for any contribution that I made. Forgive me for all the contribution I made to sin, Lord God, and to the enemy gave place to the devil when I wasn't saved in New York, Lord God. The things that I did, Lord God, that was not pleasing in your sight, Lord God, out of ignorance, God, not being saved, not knowing, Lord God, that there were consequences for my action, Lord God. Because, Father God, I, you know, so I, I'm asking you to forgive me of my, my, my sinful state that I was in when I lived in New York, Father God. And I continue right now, Lord God, to pray for comfort for all those who have lost loved ones in New, in New York, Lord God. Loved ones, Lord God. Comfort them, Lord. Father God, I know New York is known for the state that does not sleep. But I also know that we serve a God that never sleeps nor slumber, Lord God. And God, we thank you that you are you were there, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that even as the children were asking me, why did you allow this to happen, Lord God, that you was able to give me the words to tell them, Lord, that you did not allow this thing to happen. God, that you told the young man not to do it, Lord God, but you do not go against anyone's will, Lord God. So I pray, God, that every soul, God, that, that lost their lives that day, God, I pray that most of all that they were saved, Father God, that they had a chance to cry out and accept you sure as their personal savior, Lord God. And Father God, I pray for every financial need to be met, for every family right there, right now, Lord God, in the name of Yeshua, Lord God. And God, I pray, God, right now, God, that you are going to continue, God, God, to, to, to just to perk the saints' hearts that live in Buffalo, New York, that live in New York, period, Lord God. God, not to take things for granted, Lord God, to be discerning, Lord God, of what's going on around them at all times, Lord God, around all of us at all times, Lord God, if something does not feel right because the Holy Spirit convicts, Lord God, the Holy Spirit unctions us when something is wrong, Lord God. So right now, God, we plead the blood of Yeshua over the state of New York and God, even the suicide rate in New York, Lord God, with this horrendous, Lord God. People taking their lives, Lord God, not only through, 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 through foolish shooting, and but people are killing themselves, Lord God, over the spirit of depression, Lord God, over the spirit of oppression, Lord God, and pretending that everything is okay, Lord. Oh, Father God, move by your mercy in the state of New York right now, Lord God. Move by your grace and your mercy, Lord God. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you right now, Lord God, even in the 9-11, Lord God, all them lives that were lost, Lord God, because of terrorist attack, as Apostle Makita just prayed, Lord God. Oh, God, move by your spirit, God. Awaken, God. Awaken the people in New York, God, the saints in New York, Lord God, to pray without ceasing, Lord God. Oh, God, move by your spirit. Forgive me. Forgive us. Lord God, for not praying enough, Lord God, as my sister said, Lord God, not even knowing that we still have authority, even though we're not living there now, but we lived there in the past, Lord God. Forgive me, God, because I didn't know, Lord God. But now I know, Lord God, and I can blow the shofar over the state of New York, Lord. So I thank you for moving by your spirit and forgive us, Lord God. Forgive us, Lord God. Forgive us, God. Forgive us, Lord God. God, it's the sin of murder, Lord God. The sin of murder, Lord God, is being, is being drained, God. It's being skinned, Lord God. It's going to be cut in pieces, Lord God. If we are cutting the head off today, Lord God, we are cutting away the fat, Lord God. Mm. Move by your spirit, Lord God. 
for revival to hit New York like never before, Lord God. Oh God, a new day arising, Lord God. A new day arising, Lord God, in New York City, Lord God. Have your way, God. Let your kingdom come in New York, Lord. Let your kingdom come and your will be done in the state of New York, Lord God. In all the five boroughs, Lord God, in New York City, Lord God, Brooklyn, Queens, Lord God, Manhattan, Lord God, mm. Buffalo, God, upstate, God, downstate, Lord God. Oh, God, it's where the Statue of Liberty stands, Lord God. Let your kingdom ring, Lord God, in the state of New York, Lord God. Move by your spirit, Lord God, save to the utmost, Lord God. Continue to rise up, Lord God, anointed people, Lord God, that you have called, Lord God, not the ones that men have chosen, Lord God, but the ones that you have called and sanctified just for the state of New York, Lord God. Oh, God, give us wisdom and strategy, God. Those who live in New York now, Lord, give them wisdom and strategy, Lord God, how to pray against the spirit, God, that is hoovering over the state of New York, Lord God. We know it's one of the capital states uh, 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 for killing all kinds of, uh, uh, of um, nations gathered there, God. All nations gathered in these big metropolitan cities, Lord God. Move by your spirit, Lord God. And God, we bind the spirit of witchcraft that's over New York, Lord God. We bind up every demonic spirit that's over New York, Lord God. It's one of Satan's major playground, Lord God, in the state of New York, Lord God. We bind up every form of witchcraft right now, Lord God, and we release your spirit, your spirit of shalom, your spirit of love, your spirit of peace, Lord God, your spirit of gentleness, Lord God, your spirit of salvation and restoration, Lord God, transformation, Lord God, in the state of New York. So we thank you, Lord God, for letting your kingdom come and your will be done in the state of New York, in Yeshua's name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. When we went to New York City um, last year for the 20th anniversary of 9-11, um, as we were praying into that, the Lord made it so clear that his desire was for New York to be a beautiful light, a beacon of hope to other nations. And it is a center, like you said, Advantage Deborah it is a center for so many things in the world. The UN is there. So many things are there. And, and as we lifted this mod, so let us lift up our, our elements concerning um, New York and this shooting. Father, we lift up your desire, your will yeah. for the state of New York. It is historic in this nation. For there were things you did there, things you have done there, things you are doing there, things you will do there. And only there because of its identity, Lord God. And there's been so much bloodshed. But as we break this, Master Father, we thank you that you break terror, murder, and violence off of the state of New York in the name of Yeshua. Yes, Lord. We yes. thank you, hallelujah, Lord God, that by the stripes inside Yeshua, New York is delivered and healed. You will have your way in New York, in the state of New York. And we praise you for it, Lord God, and we receive it in intercession even now for the whole state of New York. We thank you, hallelujah, Lord God, for healing the families of the victims that were waiting for their husband, their wife, their sister to come home, to take care of them, to celebrate their birthday, to, to bless them, to fellowship with them that day. We thank you, hallelujah, Father God, that you healed them for by your stripes, Yeshua, the families, they are healed. By your stripes, oh God, they have a deeper relationship with you for many of them professed Messiah. We thank you, Lord God, for drawing them to yourself, Lord God, and giving them the support that they need. And we receive this matzah even now. In Yeshua's name, amen. We lifted the cup before you, Lord God. In the name of Yeshua. And we thank you for the blood of Messiah that atoned for innocent bloodshed. We are looking at the faces of innocent people whose blood was shed. Many of whom were lovers of you, represented you well in the community. 
good family members, good citizens, Lord God. We lift up the blood of Messiah this cup, Lord God. We ask you to atone for their blood shed, Lord God. For that blood cries out from the ground, Lord God, and for all the blood shed throughout the state of New York, Lord God. We, we prayed in New York City, but we're praying for New York State now. We thank you for the blood of Messiah that atones. And we bless you for rightly applying it and for delivering New York from the, the demonic schemes against it, to use it as the enemy's beacon, as opposed to being your beacon of light. We praise you for it and we receive it even now in Yeshua's name. Amen. Now we are going to pray concerning the shootings in California, in Laguna Woods, California, which is in Orange County. Um, on Sunday, May 15th, David Chow walked into the Geneva Presbyterian Church, had lunch with them, locked the doors, set off smoke bombs, and began shooting. Dr. John Chen, who's a part of that church, jumped on the gunman, held him down, and others also jumped on him, and they were able to, to suppress him. They were able to hog tie him um, for authorities. And John Chen was the only one, Dr. John Chen was the only one who lost his life. Five others were injured, as you see in the, in the picture to the right. This happened in church, which means these are our brothers and sisters. But the only outcry has come from the Taiwanese community, has not come from the global body of Messiah, has not come from the national body of Messiah, because we don't see them as our brethren. And we need to repent for that. Because this happened in God's house. And so I want to turn it over now um, to Apostle Nikki, who lived in California, so she can pray. And then if you want to do the communion as well, Apostle Nikki, you can, or you can turn it back over to me. It's up to you. Amen. Father, Abba Elohim, you created life. You created man to be in your likeness and your image. Forgive us for not living the life in your likeness and your image. Forgive us, Father, for our sins. Forgive us, Father, for the state of California is called the golden state. And many times when I think of the golden state, it makes me think of a golden calf and how this is a golden state calf that is lifted up here in America and how there's so much that's glitz and glamor and gold that comes out. But even in California, there's high places where people go to make sacrifices. And Father, we ask that you would just destroy every evil altar for every witch and warlock that erected evil altars that have been rejoicing over the bloodshed in California. Father, forgive us for California is where the church of Satan was started, Father. And I ask that you would forgive us for even allowing that to come about and that we have not prayed for its destruction, that we have not prayed for it to be destroyed, we have not prayed for it to be torn down, that we have not been like Gideon to take down the altars of Baal, to Baal and Asherah. That forgive us, Father. Because many times when we see active shooters, we understand that they're stressors and we know that Chow had a stressor. We know that part of his anger comes from the fact that he lost his apartment building and the money and the proceeds that him and his wife shared that she took that money and went back to Taiwan. And we see that that's a trigger. But Father, I thank you that even in that situation, Father, that the people came together and they were able to subdue him. But Father, we forgive child, but we ask that you would minister life to him. That even in the prison cell, that someone would minister the word of God to him. That even in that prison cell, that someone would minister salvation unto him, Father, because we know that you, that you desire that no one would perish. And even though child has done something evil, Father, we know that we can see in your word where you have forgiven someone for or even murdering. We can see where Moses, he killed the Egyptian, but still he was forgiven and he was called to do great things. We can see where Apostle Paul, that he held the cokes as they were stoning Stephen, Father. And that even in that, Father, that he was known to go about assassinating people, but you still forgave Apostle Paul and we just forgive David Child. Father, I ask that you would forgive us 
Forgive us for lifting up California and for exalting it for its glitz and its glamour, for thinking that it's such a wealthy place and that it goes about having all types of evil. Forgive us for California because there is the capital, Father, in when it comes to pornography, that it's the capital of when it comes to all types of horror, that it's the capital, Father, of even some of the most mass murders that we have seen, mass rapings that we have seen. Forgive us for the sin and for the blood that has been shed in California. Forgive us that how California cries out, its blood cries out to you, Father. Forgive us for California being a capital of homosexuality, Father, and for secret sins and for hidden sins, for even secret restaurants where they eat all kinds of defiled animals. Forgive us for the things that take place in California and that it's a part of America. Forgive us, Father, that we have taken the life that you've given to us and we have not bowed down and worshiped your son, Yeshua HaMashiach. Forgive us, Father, that we have mega churches in California, but who and what are they praying for? That they have not taken authority, that they have not taken the ground, but they've taken the ground to build large churches, that they've taken over stadiums, basketball stadiums to have services, but yet they have no power. Forgive us, Father, for our sins in California. Forgive us, Father for the bloodshed of children, for child sacrifice. Forgive us, Father, for the abortion rate that happens in California. Forgive us, Father, for the immigrants that come into California and, and they are trafficked. Forgive us for human trafficking that takes place in California. Forgive us, Father, for the drugs that go through California, for the trafficking of drugs and human mules that go through California. Forgive us, Father for even the killings of immigrants because they haven't been documented, Father. Forgive us. Forgive us, Father, for even the, the cargo ships that bring in immigrants hidden and some of them make it across the pond and some of them don't. Forgive us, Father, for all the sins that take place on the West Coast. California takes up the majority of the West Coast. It's the West Gate of America. Forgive us, Father, for the watchmen who have not been on the wall, who have not stood at the gate and said, these should not come in. Forgive us, Father. Forgive us, Father, and Father, even forgive us because child was from Las Vegas and he drove from Las Vegas over to California to commit his sin. He bought his guns in Las Vegas, but Father, even forgive us because Las Vegas is connected to California and all of the sins that take place in Nevada, being the capital of prostitution. Forgive us, Father, for everything that we continue to legalize in California and then the rest of the states follow throughout the United States. Forgive us, Father, for the NRA rallies that happen and take place in California. That support that a child that is 18 who cannot drink should be able to buy a gun. And the justification is that if he can serve in the military, he should be able to buy a gun. Forgive us, Father. For the sins for the greed, for the whoredom of Babylon coming out of California and spreading across the United States. Forgive us for every movie theater that does not make a movie that exalts you, Father. But for every movie that is made that promotes horror, that promotes terror, that promotes gun violence, that promotes prostitution, that promotes homosexuality, forgive us, Father. Mm. For those sins. Forgive us for the innocent blood that was shed, Dr. Ch John Ching, who ran across the room to charge at the shooter, who had barricaded elderly people in a room, that he gave his life for his church family. Forgive us, Father for not giving up our own lives to save others. Like Yeshua, we say we wanna be like Yeshua HaMashiach, but how many of us are really willing to do it, Father? Dr. Ching, he leaves a wife and children behind. But they will always have the legacy that he gave up his life to save others. How many of us are willing to do that like our, 
like a Messiah, Yeshua. Forgive us, Father, for the whoredoms of the Golden State, California. Forgive us. Forgive us for causing you to be so long suffering towards us that you continue to give grace and mercy while we still break your heart. While we don't stand and cry out state by state by state. Yeah, America, America, cry out state by state. America, America, cry out city by city. Where are the intercessors? Where are the watchmen upon the wall? We need to cry out with a broken and contrite heart. Father, forgive us. In Yeshua's name I pray. Amen. If you will grab hold to your matzah. Father, we just lift up the body of Yeshua. And we thank you that he was broken on our behalf. And we ask that you would just break every whoredom, every Babylonian, every every form of satanic worship, every high thing that has exalted itself against the knowledge of you in California, every golden calf that's been erected, every sin, every human trafficking, everything that happens in California that's been justified, every form of homosexuality, tear it down and break it. We thank you for the body of Yeshua. We thank you that he was pierced and broken on our behalf. And we take it, we eat the body of Yeshua. In Yeshua's name I pray, amen. I thank you for the blood of Yeshua. Cleanse California. Cleanse the state of California. Cleanse it. Cleanse it for all the bloodshed, for everything, for all of it. Cleanse. Cleanse it. Cleanse the state of California with the blood of Yeshua. Wash it, purify it, sanctify it, turn it white as snow. Hallelujah. Cleanse every every secret place, every hidden place, everything that it goes on in California. Cleanse it and purify it and sanctify it. Set it apart, Father. We give it back to you. We give California back to you. And we ask that you would cleanse it and purge it in Yeshua's name, I pray. Mm. Amen. Now, if you would go ahead and just pray for Texas as well, you're the only Texan. Okay. Father, Abba Elohim, forgive us for the bloodshed of children. Forgive us that America is numb to the bloodshed of children. Forgive us that America is so numb to the bloodshed of children that we're arguing over abortion. We're arguing over the rights as to whether or not someone be able to murder a child after after 20 within 21 28 days of being born. Forgive us father that so much bloodshed through abortion has saturated this country and even in Texas father that we would have such a great massacre of children, of little children. They were locked in a bear in a room, Father. Forgive us that the children had to look at such evil that was being used by the 18-year-old young man who decided to go in there and barricade them and lock them in. Father, forgive us that teachers who are educating our children were not protected. The children or the teachers were protected, Father, because a door on this side of the building was open. Forgive us, Father, that in a small town of America in Texas, in the state of Texas, Father, 
Children could not enjoy. They had just come back from an award ceremony. Receiving awards, Father, for good attendance and for different things, for different reasons. And the moment of celebration turned to a moment of horror. Forgive us, Father, that we have such a racial divide and discrepancy that Border Patrol came and not the local police to their aid. Forgive us, Father, that parents were outside screaming and crying, waiting to find out the truth about their child. The torments of the mothers, the fathers, the godparents, the grandparents, the aunties, the uncles, even some foster parents. Forgive us, Father, that children didn't make it to the end of the school year. That their lives were taken in a moment. Because we want to have the right to be able to tell someone at 18 that they have a right to be able to buy arms. That they have a right to be able to go on their 18th birthday and go buy assault weapons. When they don't even have the mental capacity or intelligence to be able to handle and understand the power which they have. Forgive us, Father, that we have raised a generation that is numb. That it's okay to kill your grandmother. Father, where have we gone to and what have we done that our children think it's okay to kill their grandmother? It used to be a time that we honored and reverenced our grandparents, but where have we turned to? What have we done with our children? That they would think it's okay to kill their grandmother. Father, what happened? We need the hearts of the fathers to turn towards the sons and the hearts of the sons to turn towards the fathers. Forgive us, Father. For such atrocities in America, forgive us, Father, that the state of Texas has had the most mass shootings already, and we haven't even made it to the to half of the year. Oh, half of the Gregorian, Gregorian calendar. Forgive us, Father, that we have leaders who are numb, who say that changing the gun laws is not what we need to do. But Father, we ask that you would touch the heart of every senator, every Congress member, and you would that you would address them and that you would deal with them in the night, Father. That they would take a second look on what they vote for and how they vote for gun laws. That an 18-year-old can go buy guns, Father, and think that they have the right to go into a school to kill. That they have a right to kill their grandmother and then brag about it on social media. Mm. Forgive us, Father, that people brag and post stuff on social media. Like it's something to relish. And that people make comments on social media as though it's okay to post that you just killed your grandmother. Forgive us, Father. That we are not raising our children in the church. Forgive us, Father, that we're not teaching our children how to pray. Forgive us, Father, that we're raising a generation that is numb, that has become common for mass murders. Common for mass murders. Forgive us, Father, that mass murders are common. That it's just a part of the nightly news, Father. Forgive us for the innocent bloodshed of those babies. And the babies of those that have been aborted. Forgive us, Father, that we continue to offer up things to Moloch. That we continue to sacrifice our children for the sake of a dollar. A dollar. We continue to sacrifice our children for a dollar because of greed, Father. Forgive us for serving mammon. Forgive us for serving mammon. Forgive us, Father, for the greed. And how we continue to offer up our children as sacrifices. Forgive us, Father. Oh, God, forgive us. Forgive us, 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 forgive us. Forgive us. Forgive us, Father. Turn the hearts of the fathers towards the sons and the hearts of the sons towards the fathers. Oh, God, help us. Forgive us for what Texas, the middle, the middle state, 
the lower middle state, what it does, what it represents, Father. Forgive us for all the greed that sits in Texas, Father. We joke and we say that Texas is, is it, everything in Texas is big, Father, for even for the oil that's down there and for the, for the wealth that's down there and for the greed that sits there, Father. But even how the greed that is there, Father, forgive us how we have allowed a mammon to continue to rule and to reign, Father. But we just ask that you would de dethrone it over Texas dethrone it over california tear it down and break it father we know that you have already broken the throne but father it continues to try to rise and stay in agreement with babylon i just ask that you would forgive us for our sins father that you would wash us purify us, father and sanctify us and that all the churches the congregations the large congregations that are in texas father that you would pierce the hearts of the members that they would come out of their walls and come out of their fancy buildings and come out of their high rise seats father and that they would begin to pray and cry out to you that the congregations in Texas would cry out until you answer you said if my people will call by my name would humble themselves and pray call them to prayer petition them the prayer father call for the watchmen and the intercessors until they give you no rest day and night call for them let them not think that intercession is about standing at an altar and interceding but let them break down and cry out let them turn down their plates until they hear an answer from you god yeah the most Call for the intercessors in every state. Call for them in Texas, Father. And let them rally around. And Father, let us not go on as life as usual. Forgive us for going on as life as usual. Father, we should have stopped that day. We should have stopped. Everything should have stopped. But we kept going like life was usual as usual because we've come numb to these kind of atrocities. Forgive us, Father. Forgive us, Father. We don't want to die. Don't let us die in our sins. Don't let us die in being numb, Father. But bring us back to life. Father, give us a spiritual heart surgery. Give us a spiritual defibrillator and jolt us back to life. Jolt your body back to life. Jolt your intercessors back to life. Jolt your watchmen back to life, Father. And let us stand on the wall and intercede. And let us continue to cry out to you. Oh, we thank you, Father, for hearing our prayer and for answering our prayers and giving us strategies. In Yeshua's name I pray. Amen. And amen. Apostle, can you do the uh, offering? Amen. If you guys would lift up your matzah at this time. Father, we lift up this matzah before you, the, the striped, pierced, and broken body of Messiah. And we break it in prayer that you would not have to break Texas. I saw a vision years ago of the, 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 the southeastern portion of Texas being cut off because of the trafficking and the drugs and the violence and the, the deception, the prostitution, all the things that were going back and forth in the border. Father, we, 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 we break the, the, the striped, pierced and broken body of Messiah so that you would not have to break Texas. We thank you that by your stripes, Yeshua, Texas is healed in the name of Yeshua. We thank you, hallelujah, Father, for, 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 for healing the families of all of the children and the teachers that were lost, Lord God. We thank you in particular for healing the Garcia family, Lord God, who lost not just the mother, but the father who had a heart attack the very next day, Lord God. We thank you that by your stripes, Yeshua, they are healed. We thank you that you strengthen the churches that are already intervening, the children that are preparing to, to pray and share testimonies tomorrow in church. We thank you, Lord, for healing them for allowing their testimonies to come forth, for them to become stronger, Lord God, stronger in their faith, stronger in their love for you, Lord God. We thank you for the pastors and for the leaders getting in position, Lord God, and supporting the families, Lord God. We thank you for the community rallying together, and we thank you that you restore a sense of community, 
a sense of safety in your body, which they had. Many moved there to be safe. We think that you restore a sense of safety there, Lord God, and that you allow the eyes of Texas to focus on that small town and be warned to turn back to you. We lift up the large ministries, the huge mega ministries in Texas, Lord God, and we thank you that you call them into action. That they be used by you in healing in that state, Lord God. And not just a cover-up healing, but a deliverance healing that leads to true revival, Lord God. As we receive this monster, Father, we thank you that your will for Texas shall come to pass. We bless you, hallelujah, Lord God. We thank you for the, the, the Latino communities, for the Native American communities in Texas. And we thank you for using them in this moment to shake everybody else up into their position. We receive this monster even now, knowing that you will have your way. We praise you for it and we receive it in Yeshua's name. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah, Father, we lift the cup before you. We bless you for the blood of Messiah that atones for all of the innocent blood shed. All of the blood. There were, there were bodies that were so destroyed that they couldn't even identify them except by the DNA on their clothes. All of that blood cries out to you. The blood of children captured at the border to transport drugs. The blood of, of babies uh, aborted in Texas, Lord God, there's, there's so much blood. Blood of natives, blood of, of Mexicans, there's so much blood. We thank you, hallelujah, Father, for atoning for all innocent blood shed in Texas. You know how it was shed. You know the circumstances. We thank you for your blood atoning. And we bless you that you call Texas back to yourself and you fill it with yourself. As we receive this cup, we thank you that you pour out your spirit in Texas, that you have your way. In Texas, in Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Now we've got um, uh, to, to pray for the United States of America. We've been praying. And so uh, we're going to go ahead and lift up the matzah for our nation. And we pray for the U.S. every time we have a Rosh Hashanah. We continue to pray for the U.S., but Father, in light of these three tragedies that have happened back to back, we ask, Lord God, that you wake up the United States to your will and to your purposes. We thank you, Lord God, for shaking this nation into alignment with you. We thank you for the purging that you're doing even now in Yeshua's name. And we bless you, hallelujah, Lord God, as we break this monster, you break off the enemy's assignments and schemes from this nation in the name of Yeshua. For by your stripes, the United States of America is healed. We thank you, hallelujah, Father, as we receive this monster, that you heal divisions in this nation. You heal deep soul wounds in this nation. You heal uh, issues at the foundation of this nation, like terror and racism, Babylon, mammon, at the foundation of this nation. We thank you, Father, that as we receive this monster, Yeshua, you heal this land and have your way in it. For this is your country. You founded the United States of America for yourself. We dedicate it back to you. As we receive this monster, we say, have your way. We partake of this as American citizens who are one with you that you would bring our nation into alignment with your kingdom. We receive it even now. We bless you for it. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah, Father, we lift up the cup before you. We thank you for the blood of our Messiah. And we ask that you atone for innocent blood shed in the United States historically and even right up to this very second. That you atone for bloodshed and that you pour out your spirit in this nation, calling us to yourself. Open our spiritual eyes that we might see that you are at work. Turn our eyes towards you, giving us clarity, moments of clarity that we could choose you. Without the blinders of the enemy and the dullness of sin, we thank you, hallelujah, Father, for moments of clarity 
for citizens of America that we might have opportunity to truly choose for ourselves this day whom we will serve. We praise you, Lord God, that you remind us of what you established this nation for, for your purposes, to, to reveal your kingdom on the earth, to, to, to lift up Israel on its shoulders, to take the gospel to the four corners of the earth, to prepare the way for Messiah. We thank you, hallelujah, Father, that you remind us of your identity, your purpose for this nation, Lord God. And as we receive this cup, we receive your identity and your purposes for this nation with blood atonement and outpouring of your spirit. We ask that you support and strengthen every ministry that is doing your work all over this nation. Your people who really love you and are obedient to you, Lord God, we ask that you strengthen all of us and, and draw us deeper into your will. We receive that strengthening even now as we, as we partake of this cup. In Yeshua's name we pray, amen. Now, of course, we have to pray for Israel. We'd be remiss if we didn't pray for Israel. Tomorrow is Yom Yerushalayim which is Jerusalem Day, um, and there have been threats by those who, who don't want Israel to celebrate um, Jerusalem being back in Israeli hands. Jerusalem, Yerushalayim, means cities of Shalom. It is literally the place of God's authority on earth that connects with the place of his authority in the heavenly realm. And so, Father, as we lift up this matzah, we thank you, hallelujah, Lord God, for your will for Israel. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for the peace of Israel, Lord God, and for all your people, Israel, in the land and throughout the diaspora all over the world, Lord God. And as we break this matzah, we thank you that you break terror off of Israel as well. In the name of Yeshua, terror from within, terror from without. In the name of Yeshua, we thank you for Jewish souls saved. We thank you for Israelis coming to faith, both Palestinians and Jews. Hallelujah, Father. We thank you for revelation of Messiah Yeshua, for by his stripes, Israel is healed. For you will return to Jerusalem to rule the world. And as we partake of this matzah, we stand in agreement with you that Israel shall be a light to the nations. We bless you for it, Lord God, and we receive it even now. In Yeshua's name we pray, amen. Father, we lift up the cup before you. We thank you for the blood of Messiah that atones for all sin, all innocent blood shed in Israel. And, and, if, and I want to first ask that you forgive us as Americans for being a terrible model to Israel. Israel's ancient model is the Torah in the ancient nation of Israel. But as a contemporary nation, they've modeled themselves after the United States. And they've not just modeled themselves after the things we do right, but also after the things that, they, that we do wrong. More Jews have died from abortion in Israel than died in the Holocaust. And that's because of the model the United States has set. Father, we ask that you forgive us as Americans for being a terrible example to Israel, for being a, a fair weather friend to Israel, for, for trying to force Israel to give up land for peace, for putting pressure on Israel to make political decisions that are advantageous to us so we think and putting Israel in terrible positions. Forgive us, Lord God, and forgive Israel for following our lead instead of stepping up and being the leader to the nations that you ordained for Israel to be because we should be following Israel. As we receive this cup, Lord God, we thank you that you atone for bloodshed in Israel, terror attacks, uh, a murder, violence, every, every innocent bloodshed, Christians massacring Jews and Muslims in the Crusades in Israel, in the land that is Israel. We thank you, hallelujah, Father, that you atone for bloodshed in Israel, Lord God. And we bless you even now that you pour out your Ruach HaKadosh in Israel, your Holy Spirit pour out in Israel and prepare the way for Messiah. We thank you that you release the spirit of Elijah in Israel. Hallelujah, that witnesses to the true identity of Messiah. And turns the hearts of the fathers to the sons and the hearts of the sons to the fathers. As we receive this cup, we stand in agreement with you on it. We thank you for visitations and revelations, for prophecies and dreams in the name of Yeshua in Israel. We thank you that Yeshua is welcome there. And he is being revealed. And one day he will be received in the physical realm. We praise you for it and we thank you for that even now in Yeshua's name we partake. Amen. Father, we offer this burnt offering for leaders 
leaders are the rams. They're the ones that protect the flock. They stand on the mountain and they watch. We lift up the leaders of Israel. We lift up the leaders of the United States and particularly the state leaders, the governor of Texas, the governor of California, the governor of New York coming in in her interim post, Lord God. We lift them up, we lift the mayors of Buffalo and, and, and Lugano Woods and, 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 and Uvalde, Lord God. We lift up all of the senators and representatives, as Apostle Nikki was saying, but for all of these places, Lord God, and throughout the United States, Lord God, and we thank you, hallelujah, Lord God, that you put a heavenly pressure on the leaders to lead in accordance with your will. Visit them and give them unrest, Lord God until they see what you're trying to reveal, which is to serve the needs of the people, to fulfill your will. Look, I give them clarity in the name of Yeshua that they would understand what you are doing in this hour. Remove witchcraft spells from them, Lord God. Remove uh, counselors who've been filled with the demonic, who've been assigned to them, Lord God. Remove them, cancel and cast down every curse and witchcraft spell that's been spoken over leaders, Lord God. We thank you in the name of Yeshua, Lord God, that you set them free and give them moments of clarity that they might understand the truth and make right decisions. Lord God, we lift up professed Christian politicians. And we ask in the name of Yeshua that you reveal hypocrisy to them. Reveal to them how they've been hypocritical and not doing your will. Make it clear and give them no rest until they commit more to the kingdom of God than to any political party or party platform. We thank you, Lord God, that you reveal your will to them. We lift up religious leaders in the name of Yeshua, Lord God. We ask you give us no rest until we understand that we are to serve you and your people, Lord God. That we will put that first. Deliver us all from greed and mammon and Babylon, from secret perversion, for abuse, abusing the flock, abusing the sheep, abusing the constituents, abusing power, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, as if we break this monster, that you break these things off of leaders, remove the target off of leaders' backs and give leaders clarity, truth, Lord God, and moments of clarity to see clearly and make informed decisions. And as we break this monster, we thank you, Lord God, that those that you've given opportunity to repent who have refused, that you remove them from leadership and replace them with leaders who will serve you, Lord God. We ask that you heal our government that you heal Israel's government that is fractured and divided and, and can hardly even move forward. We thank you, hallelujah, Lord God, that you, you deal with the divisions in the governments and you be revealed as the true king of both nations and of every state. We praise you for it, Lord God, and we receive it even now. In Yeshua's name we pray, amen and amen. Hallelujah, Father, we lift up the cup before you. We thank you for the blood of Messiah. I'm sorry, I keep doing that. We thank you for the blood of Messiah that is, is cleansing leaders of secrets and defilement, curses, generational curses, uh, influence and suggestion by the enemy, Lord God. We thank you, hallelujah, that as we drink the blood of Messiah, even now, Lord God, we partake of you, Yeshua, that you atone for blood shed by leaders. You atone for the blood of leaders that has been shed. We thank you, hallelujah, Father, that you pour out your spirit upon leaders, giving them opportunity to, to represent you well or receive your cup of judgment. We thank you, hallelujah, Father, that you are well able to do it and that this is a season of justice. And we bless you that you would, just, you will, you would judge swiftly, Lord God. We receive this cup even now and we bless you that you have your way in the leadership of Israel, the leadership of the United States and the leadership in New York State, California State and Texas. We thank you for it, Lord God, and we receive it in Yeshua's name. Amen. Now we did have some who wanted to pray. This last prayer, this last prayer is the sin offering for all of the people we just prayed for which means this sin offering, it covers anything we didn't cover. Anything we missed, anything we didn't say just now, that's what this last prayer covers. And so let me see, uh, where is it? I believe the Davids wanted to pray this prayer. And you guys can go ahead and open your mic if that's correct. Yes. Yes, okay. So if you guys go ahead and... 
and pray this prayer. I'll put back up on the screen. Um, okay, you guys can begin praying now, and then I'll do the communion when you finish. Thank you, Father God. We recognizing more as time goes on, how uh, immoral we are with us, how evil we can be without you. We can just decide in, in, in our, our members because of what was done, um, what Adam did the first time with us. So Father, we thank you for Messiah, Lord God, who, whose body, whose blood was broken through, whose, whose blood was shed for the religion of sin. And so Lord God, those of us, those who have suffered loss, they may say that this is evil, and it is evil, Lord God. But the concern is those who survive, those who are alive, the relatives, the, the parents, the, all of the, where do they stand with you? Where do they stand with you? Father, it's crazy for us to not believe in you and say something is evil. So what standard do we have other than yours? We want to gauge different types of sins, and Father, forgive us for measuring by our standard, Lord your standard is the only true standard. You are, you are God alone and you cannot change. Your word does not change. Your standard never changed. But we have, we drifted away from you. And we call ourselves doing good works. Father, this greco Roman mindset has truly penetrated our society. And we ask you to forgive us right now. We ask you to forgive every single one of us. Your word is for you love the world so much that you sacrifice to us. But those who will believe would have eternal life. Well, there's situation after situation. The question is, do we believe? Do they believe? Will they believe? How much, how much worse things have to get before we turn our eyes? So God, we're asking you to forgive us, Lord God, because we've set up things in this society that makes it quite easy to sin. We set up TV, so we've allowed it. TV shows, the church, the people have allowed TV shows and everything to air. And then we want to we wanna yell at the pedophile, but we're just as bad as in, in our sin. You don't have a measuring stick that goes high and low like a thermometer. Sin is to separate from you, separate from you. And we've embraced knowingly and unknowingly the things that cause us to be separate from you. And this is the fruit thereof. Father, the church has been powerless because we have incorporated pagan practices and want to call it holy. Forgive us, Lord God. We, we want to merge different types of tunes and bring them into your, your most holy place. Forgive us, Lord God. We want to argue just before coming to service and say, God bless you to other folks. Forgive us, God. The hypocrisy is unreal. We're asking you right now, Lord God, search our heart, purge our heart so that we can holy serve you, be a worthy sacrifice. We can't do it without you. We need you to empower us. We need you to empower us by your Ruach HaKadim. Your grace is astounding. But Father, we do not want to continue in this so that your grace can abound even more. That's crazy. That is crazy. Father, it's been mentioned before. Someone mentioned it before. If my people are called by your, by your name, will humble themselves and pray. Your face and turn from the wicked way. And Father, we always equate wickedness with, 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 with uh, something that is atrocious as what has happened. And it is evil. The mass shootings are evil. Abortions are evil. Drunk driving is evil. People getting stabbed at the stoplight, that's all evil. But we can't put a ban on cars and, and knives and, and, and should a ban alcohol. But the bottom line is that's not what's being done. The hearts of the people are not being turned back to it. And we, the believers, are not doing what we're supposed to be doing. There's a remnant that is. The harvest is truly plentiful for the laborers of God. Father, forgive us for a lackadaisical attitude. Church of Leah this year, we do good works, but we don't have that type of relationship. Forgive us. We need you like never before. The blood of a baby is a point. They've been crying. 60 million children die each year. Be our voice. We're asking you, God, to, to forgive us for that level of bloodshed. Because in the womb or outside of the womb, no life is more important than God. Both our society pushed that narrative. 
we have, we're divided because of a, a, a woman's choice for, for life or whatever. Father God, forgive us. We've been sucked into this, this plot that the enemy has put upon us. We're not seeing it with your eyes. We're seeing it with our emotions. We ask you to forgive us, Lord. We need your power. We need your spirit. Not the pseudo church service that we do on a Sunday or whenever. We need true revelation of the dominion that we're supposed to have. True revelation of how to subdue it according to your standard. True revelation of how to be fruitful and multiply according to your word. Forgive us, Lord. You said, go on to them that cause these little ones to stumble. And for decades, we've been causing our little ones to stumble. You said it would be best if a millstone was tied around us and cast into the sea. That is a death sentence for a lot of us, Lord. But we're thankful for your grace and your mercy. Father, we don't want to count that short. We don't want to take that light. You've given us grace. You've extended mercy because you want us to turn from our wicked ways. You want us to repent. You want us to walk. Worthy of the calling. For fathers to truly be fathers, not just be sperm donors. For mothers to truly be mothers, not just the one to collect child support. Father God, forgive us for the wickedness we have embraced and try to doctor it up as something that goes into it. So, Lord, I plead the blood of the child over the whole thing. And I ask you to see us where we are, to transform, continually transform. Those who truly want transformation, Father God, reach out to them, trust them right where they are. And those who have a hardened heart, Father, make it a, a harder. Something has happened in, the, in our lives that has caused, caused us to become hard, to form walls, to, to, to put a shroud around us. Self-preservation, because we vow no one will ever hurt us like that again. Only you know what was going on in the at the time. Only you know what was going on with the, the, the shooter in New York and in California. Down. Only you know. We will never know. But for those of us who witnessed this atrocity, those of us, those of us who survived it, there's a work to be done. You didn't allow us to stay alive. Just to stay alive. You want us to go out and transform. So we ask you, first and foremost, God, to heal us, because that's why we're so dysfunctional. Heal us, restore us, redeem us. And in the fullness of time, we really go out to this time. We thank you right now. Bless you. Amen. Pastor Rose, awesome. gonna pray concerning um the sin offering for the people. Pastor Rowe, you can open up your mic at this time. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you. Hold on. I'm trying to close out the chat. <laughs> okay. Um, what, what the Lord gave me, Apostle, everyone, Shabbat Shalom, good evening. And then I will go ahead and, 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 and do a brief prayer. And then Apostle, you, you can do the communion if you don't mind. For the sins of the people, it's, it's coming from Romans chapter 8. We are all familiar with 1 all the way down to 30 something, 33. But what he led me to was um, uh, starting at the, um, the fourth verse up and, and ending with the the eighth verse just to briefly share and then I'll go into the prayer for you know uh, of, of us you know sinning we are all familiar with the first one about how there's no condemnation and then uh, verse two about the law of the spirit and uh, verse three for the law could not for the law could not do in what it was weak through the flesh and how God sending his own son, only son in the likeness of the sinful flesh and for and for the sin condemned sin in the other flesh. And then how it talks about in verse four the, that the righteousness of the law may be fulfilled in us 
who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And we're familiar with for that for they that are not, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the, the spirit. Six, for to be carnally minded is death, and to be spiritually minded is the life and peace. And because of, you know, the carnal mind against God, for it is not the subject to the law of God, but rather indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. And that's where he leads me into the prayer for the sense of all, all people, how, how and why we are sinning the way we are sinning because we're throwing the things of the flesh. And I just want to give you a background on how we can, you know, pray into that. So, Abba Father, for we come to you concerning these sinful of strongholds or, or, or nations that na uh, yeah, nature that we accumulated and operate in, in the flesh that was brought into our lives. So at so as your word said, for we are all sinners born with a nature that wants only that only wants to please itself. That this, this sinful desire within us, it was barren. It has barren a root that was planted way deep down inside of us, that it needs to be broken. And it needs to be uprooted and taken away from us so that we cannot have, so we can, we cannot have fellowship, Abba. We just cannot have fellowship with you having those things with rooted and deep, we planted in us. For we want to have fellowship with the Holy God so he can take this sin away from us. How we greatly accepted the sacrifice of Yeshua, our Messiah, who bore all these things on the cross for us, that he also paid the penalty for the many sins that we committed. The sins and the sins that we committed throughout generation to generation, even up until now, and thousands of more sins that we will be committing. Oh, Father, we, we cannot do any of these things without your help to get rid of that, that sinful root that keeps us from, from you and how, and how we cannot do anything that is good without you being in our lives. Oh, Father, we... We just cannot continue to sin for Yeshua. He paid that price for us. And now without him, we are lost to the sinful nation of ours. But when but when we when we surrender our lives, when we surrender our lives to the Lordship of Yeshua, who gives us a new nature, who destroys the power of the sin of the flesh that we hold on so to so much that we make it the first forerunner of our lives. The old nature that once dictated our lives, we need you, Abba, to destroy that power. We need you to, to build our weaknesses to make us strong in your spirit as you stated in your word. According to Romans chapter eight, even though the whole from number from verse one gives us reasons on when we surrender ourselves to you, that there is no condemnation. Then it goes in to give us reasons on why we are sinning because of the law that we want about with the to to connect it with the flesh. Oh, Father, but we just need you right now to help us, to deliver us because of the, those things that we 
held on to from the nature of our flesh, the sins that manifest, that had these people to come up thinking that they were above the law to do what they did and thinking that it was okay. Yes, Father, I know the two young men who, who are no longer here will stand before judgment and you will take care of that. But the one who are still here, we just pray deliverance and salvation for his soul as we all repent of our sins and put the flesh aside or put the flesh away and that all who are in leadership will know that you are King of King and Lord of Lord, that you are the God who created everything and all things. And then that without you, we are nothing. And we thank you that you have given us the law. We thank you have given us Yeshua who said he did not come to condemn, but to abolish, to fulfill it. That we receive him right now. We receive the salvation of Yeshua right now in the name of your son. We just want to receive him. So as we move forward, Father, we will be able to stand for him. As it was cried out that the intercessors arise and that the watchmen and the gatekeepers on the wall will come forth, that we will be able to stand in the calling that you have given us. Oh, Father, this is my heart's cry. And I touch and agree and decree and declare all the prayers that went forward, that you will be glorified in even in this trauma, even in this hardship, even in a heartbrokenness that you will still be glorified because you will step in and you will take control like you already always have from generation to generation. And I just thank you, God, that it is an eye opener for right now for all of us in the United States of America who always took these things lightly. We thank you, Father, that it has hit home that we will be able to rise up and take our stand and to do the will and 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 do the plan and the purpose that you have for us in our lives. So all these things and more, Father, even as we depart one from another, as we go in our prayer privately and corporately, we will continue to put you first and we will cry out to you how we serve you and what must we do on this earth while we are here to do the will that you have for us. So, Father, I say thank you. I thank you for everyone who is on this call who's on the Zoom meeting and who will watch it later. I thank you for Apostle Nikita and Apostle Nikki and, and all the ministers and the elders and just everyone who's on this on this line right now that you will fill and overfill us with your precious blood of the Lamb of Yeshua. I pray these things in Yeshua's name. Amen and amen. And thank you. Amen. Now we're going to take the communion for this last sin offering. And so if you have your elements, you can grab them, um, your, your matzah and your um, grape juice. So hallelujah, Father, we, we uh, lift up ourselves again because, of course, of course, we have been a part of everything we pray for. We thank you, hallelujah, that you're cleansing us in the name of Yeshua, Lord God. Uh, we lift up uh, the, 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 fam the families of the victims in Buffalo. We lift up the city of Buffalo. We lift up the state of New York. Lord God, lift up the families of um, the, the victim and, and even those who were injured in um, Laguna Woods and we lift up the, the Geneva uh, Presbyterian Church, lift up the Topps uh, grocery store, Lord God. And we lift up the, the, the state of California, Lord God. We lift up uh, Uvalde, Texas and Rob Elementary School, Lord God. And we lift up the state of Texas, Lord, we lift up the United States, we lift up Israel, we lift up all leaders everywhere and everyone for whom we are praying, anything that we miss, anything that, that you wanted to release, anything you wanted to address that we have failed to address, Father, we thank you that all manner of sin is addressed by Yeshua, and as we break this mat, so we thank you that you break the law of sin and death off of everyone for whom we're praying, Lord God, in every region for whom we're praying, every nation for which we're praying, Lord God. We thank you, hallelujah, that by the stripes from Messiah Yeshua, they are healed. We thank you, Lord God, that every prayer that you know we didn't even know to pray, you have already heard it, Lord God. And as we partake of this month, so we thank you that you are working in ways that we don't even know or yet understand. But we bless you for doing it, Lord God, and we agree with you. We receive it even now in Yeshua's name. Amen.
and you should have eaten all of your matzah that we prayed over. So make sure that you did because you, it's been consecrated. And you want to make sure you drink all the grape juice or wine. Father, we lift up the cup before you, Lord God. And thank you for the blood of Messiah that atones for sin and innocent bloodshed. Anything we failed to cover, anything we failed to pray, we thank you that Yeshua himself covers it, for he is our sin offering. He is the sin offering of everyone for whom we're praying. And we bless you, hallelujah, that, 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 that his blood, the new covenant, was poured out, that you can restore men unto yourself. You can draw women, you can draw children, you can draw everyone unto yourself, Lord God. We receive the blood of Messiah even now, this blood of the new covenant poured out for all of us and everyone for whom we're praying. And we praise you for an outpouring of your Holy Spirit as well. We bless you for propelling us forward into your will and having your way. In Yeshua's name we pray and we receive it. Amen. Amen. And Yeshua said, as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Now, we have certainly gone past the time that we usually spend during our Shabbat temple services, but certainly the topic was well worth it. It was the Lord's will for us to do everything that we've done, and it was important work. I told y'all we had work to do today. And all of that happened in the inner court because repentance and, 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 and confession, that all happens at the altar of burnt offering, which means now it's time for us to go into the sanctuary. And this will not be a long time. The Lord is just thrusting us right into his presence because we've been obedient to fulfill his will. And so I want to encourage you to position yourself to allow God to minister to you as you minister back to him. We've got to spend a little bit of time in God's presence because we just poured out a lot. Our prayers, our mourning, our intercession, it was it, it poured virtue out from us. And now what we want to do is pour love onto the Lord. We want to pour our hearts, anything else in our hearts, we want to pour back onto the Lord and we want him to pour into us. And the reason we want to do that is because you got to recall that that part of the purpose for today was about preparing for Shavuot. We've got to go into this harvest field. Every place we just prayed into is a harvest field. Everything we just mentioned uh, reveals hearts that need the Lord. So we need more of his spirit. We need to walk away from this service depleted. We need to walk away from this service full. So as priests, we have to go into the sanctuary, which is where we're going right now. And I'm sharing this, this revelation with you so that you would understand that we fulfilled our assignment, our outer court assignment. Now we're going into a place of his sanctuary. Now we're going to worship him and he's going to pour back into us. And like I said, it doesn't have to be a long time. God can do it like that. But you got to position yourself to let him minister to you. And so I'm going to turn it back over to the Nichols who are going to worship. And as they worship, we're going to go from the, the outer sanctuary, which is where we are right now. We're going to go right into the inner sanctuary. And then I'm going to dismiss us. And so I'm going to turn it over to you guys at this time. Thank you, Lord. We 
do not faint you speaking to us that he is the Lord, our God who heals, not just us, 
but everything and everyone for whom we're praying. He, he is promising us in this moment that every time we resign to get low, when we humble ourselves, when we, when we allow ourselves to go into the pain, into those, those hard places, as, as low as we're willing to go, that's as high as he will bring us up. He will elevate us and seat us in heavenly places. He will restore and pour into us. Hallelujah. That's the very thing he's been doing, doing during this time of worship. Father, we worship you. Hallelujah. We thank you for that, Lord, even now. In Yeshua's name. I bless the Lord for the worship team. And I want to encourage you guys to position yourselves as we uh, rededicate ourselves to the Lord through the wealth dedication covenant. And I release us with the benediction and the ironic blessing. Now we have just be poured out to God. He's poured out to us, but there's, there's things we've got to do going forward. And he wants everything. He wants our worship. He wants our time. He wants our relationships. He wants our, our financial wealth. And so we want to dedicate back to him everything that he considers wealth and then i'm going to release this with a benediction and the ironic blessing and so seek god about saying this aloud with us not as an arrogant assertion but instead as as a humble realization that these are the things god requires of us and we want to be faithful to him in all areas so that as we continue to humble ourselves in our obedience he will continue to lift us up let's say it together we live govern all things in our care and steward our resources in accordance with the word of God in its entirety, seeking his help to obey his commandments and apply their wisdom to our lives, governance, and stewardship. We betrothed ourselves to God forever in righteousness, justice, love, and compassion. We trust in him and worship him alone, giving him our first and best. Our intimate fellowship with God governs all of our other relationships. We surrender our time to God so that he can order our days. We honor his Shabbats established when he created the world and his annual feast as divine appointments with him. We honor our commitments to others and keep our oaths to them, especially our covenants of marriage. We invite God's presence into our households so that he may reign and abide in them. We dedicate our future generations to God, committing to train all those directly in our care to worship God alone and to leave a legacy for those to come. We surrender 100% of our financial wealth to God as we seek his wisdom in all our financial decisions. We are faithful to give our tithes, first fruits, and offerings to the house of God. And we apply the word of God as we steward the remainder of our finances, investments, careers, businesses, and other income sources. We give to those in need, understanding that we are lending to God. We are the people of God and thereby dedicate all that he considers wealth to him. Father, we lift you up and we worship you, Lord God, and we thank you for calling us your people. We understand that that, that phrase, your people, that, 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 that distinguishes us from others and it requires some things of us. You require us to pray. You require us to seek your face, to turn from our wicked ways and all the wickedness around us. You require that we humble ourselves before you. You require that we pray on behalf of the land. You require that we intercede. You require that we, we use our gifts, that we dedicate our wealth to you. You require that we worship you. And you bless us with so many other things in return, Lord God. Forgive us, Lord, for compromising with the world and the standards around us. Forgive us for complacency and apathy. Forgive us for numbness, Lord God, as we've been praying today. Continue to pour your spirit, your character, your revelation, your wisdom, your strength, Lord God, into us, Lord. Your virtues, for we need them so much. Bring us into greater alignment with you, Lord God, and help us to identify and connect with the harvest field. Let us not be disconnected as this generation is so disconnected from each other. As we prayed early, we thank you that you're delivering us from disconnection and help us, Lord God, to be forerunners, to connect in, in intimate and healthy ways. In, in ways that are holy and give glory to you and also edify your people in ways that provide safe environments for us to confess and to receive deliverance and healing, Lord God. Places where we can receive the support and encouragement that we need, the wisdom that we need. We can ask tough questions and not be ashamed and not, not be afraid that we're going to be judged and not judge others, Lord God. We thank you, hallelujah, Father, for the way you use us today and for how you pour it back into us. 
keep pouring into us and keep using us. Help us to cast our crowns before you and, and, and receive the crowns again, even greater, Lord God, even greater assignments, even greater work, even greater anointing, and then cast them before you again and receive even more. Ask even now, Lord God, that you refresh every person who's been present in this service, Lord God, for we really did pour out a lot to you today and you poured so much into us. We ask in now, even now that you seal us with the blood of Messiah, Lord God, that nothing you reveal today will be stolen, forgotten, or confused in Yeshua's name. Help us to retain it, Lord God. We ask that you allow every seed of truth, everything you revealed, every revelation, Lord God, that you allow it to take root in our souls and bear fruit in our lives, Lord God. I ask that you protect us from the evil one, Lord God. Hallelujah. And give us eyes and hearts and ears to discern that which is of you from that which is of him, Lord God. Help us to, to be strong and steadfast and stand against the ways of the world so that we might distinguish ourselves from those things that people might seek the God that we serve and give glory and honor to you and, and, and turn their lives over to you. We thank you for a great harvest, Lord God. Prepare us to be harvesters. Workers in your harvest field, Lord God, the souls will come into your kingdom. We praise you, hallelujah, Father, that you have heard every prayer today and you have responded, you have moved, you have shifted things, you've dispatched angels, hallelujah, Lord God. We bless you, hallelujah, for everything that you've done in this particular worship service, Lord God. We ask that you redeem the time. Lord God, for certainly this was an extended worship time, but we thank you, Lord God, that it was well worth it. The obedience was well worth it, Lord God. I ask that you bless every family represented, Lord God, every ministry represented, every business represented, Lord God. I lift up all the tithes, offerings, first fruits, Lord God. I thank you, hallelujah, for the partnership gifts, Lord God, the business tithes and offerings, Lord God. I ask that you receive them, that you multiply them for the advancement of your kingdom. Open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that we would not have room enough to receive. Rebuke the devourer for our sakes, Lord God, and the first fruits, Lord God. I ask that you receive them, hallelujah, Lord God, and, and as holy, declare them holy, and then bless the entire harvest behind the first fruits, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. I ask that you bless us as we prepare for the Shalemim on, on Shavuot, Lord God, that you, you show us what you would have us to give. Put it in our hearts, Lord God. I ask that you bless the finances of every member, partner, and supporter of the truth and the spirit, Lord God, that we might do the work you called us to do in all faithfulness. Hallelujah, Lord God. Rebuke the enemy, Lord God. Disconnect us from Mammon and Babylon in every way, Lord God. God. I lift up every marriage, Lord God, every household, Lord God. I thank you that you heal and restore relationships. Hallelujah, Lord God. Set order in the name of Yeshua and, 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 and release the beautiful miracle of love and unity. I lift up the global body, Messiah, Lord God, to have your way in all of us and help the truth and the spirit to be uh, uh, to play the role in the global body that you need us to play, to do the work that you need us to do and to be the brethren to our brothers and sisters globally that you need us to be, to not see as humans see, but to see as you see, to see other kingdom citizens, other family members. We praise you for it and we bless you for it, Lord God, as you refresh the worship team, Apostle Nikki, everybody else who poured out, Lord God. Thank you for, for being with Elder Samisa and Elder Frederica today, Lord God. I thank you for blessing and ministering to them, Lord God. And we thank you that you give us sweet sleep, Lord God. As we come out of Shabbat, Lord God, we thank you that you allow the shalom to remain, that we will rest well and be blessed in your presence. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem and the pray, we pray for the peace of all Israel. And we thank you for doing all that you've desired to do in each and every one of us. In Yeshua's name we pray, amen. And so I'm going to ask you guys to position yourself to receive the ironic blessing as I release it over you and we dismiss from today's worship service. <clears throat> Ya e ave pana eleka ve honeka isa ave pana eleka ve asem leka shalom. Ve'asem l'kashalom Yahweh bless you and keep you May Yahweh shine his face upon you Yahweh bless you and keep you May Yahweh shine his face upon you And be gracious unto you May I 
look upon you and give you his shalom and give you his shalom. Bashem Yeshua HaMashiach. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen and amen. Yahweh bless you, and we look forward to seeing you next weekend on Shabbat and for Shabbat Oats. Be blessed and Shabbat Shalom.